the butler with a smile on his face tells the young lady to follow him, and she can give the luggage to the maid, after which he opens the door to the estate and says that he is glad to welcome her to the Archduke's mansion, Blackwella. Young lady's name, Laria Sherwood, the girl thinks that everything is there as in the novel. And there was a moment in which it was so quiet in the corridor that the sounds of dripping rain could be heard, and suddenly a voice was heard. The young lady screamed, where the hell was the guy? She asked it firmly in the numb man, but it seems that he ignored her question and simply continued walking without turning forward in her direction, although she honestly tried to get through to him. But the young man only pulled his hand out of hers and screamed for her to finally let him go. When he did this, the scarlet liquid stained the woman's arm and neck red. The young lady asked if the Archduke really killed Henry. The guy just threw his sword and answered yes, and then approached the woman. He claimed that the fact that he was always hanging around her made his blood boil. That's why he killed Henry. Lightning illuminated the dark room, and it became clear that his eyes were filled with tears. The guy claimed that he couldn't lose the young lady, and it would be better to just finish them all off. The butler pulls the main character out of her thoughts. He claims that the Archduke is waiting for her outside the door, and then asks if the girl is ready to come in. The blonde firmly states that yes, she is trying to pull herself together. When the butler enters the room, he reports that the Lady Sherwood has arrived. The girl understands that the man to whom she came, he is the male protagonist of this tragic novel. The young man suggests starting the interview and the main character thinks that the Archduke is a cold-blooded monster, not knowing mercy, and he was even called a monster who finished off his father. This is about Nocton Blackwell. He is also the main character in the novel written by her. According to history, he is destined to meet the saint during a trip to the Holy Lands. In this tragic novel with a gradually progressing, unusual love line, she is assigned the role of a villain who will in every possible way interfere with the love of the main characters. The young lady is Laria Sherwood. This girl is obsessed with love for the main character. Laria's story in the novel is that she longed for Nocton's love, but failed time after time. As a result, when the main characters got together, Laria, stunned by jealousy, tried in every possible way to harm the main character, because of which she aroused Nocton's wrath and ultimately died at his hands. This was her ending. And on the day when the young lady woke up in the body of Laria, for a long time, she simply could not believe her eyes. The girl kept thinking that this was a dream that would soon end, but alas, she realized that she was destined to die. The blonde locked herself in her room and did not want to leave it. She simply could not accept her terrible fate. The servants were still whispering whether their mistress's condition had changed. One of the servants confirmed that this was the case, and for some unknown reason, the young lady had suddenly closed herself off and refused to come out. But then they conclude that it is better to leave her alone, because they still won't be able to help until the lady herself asks for help. The main character only thinks whether this is really a punishment for the fact that she quit writing the novel without finishing it. But she thinks whether this is fair, and who even gave the right to do this to her. But suddenly, a thought struck her. The girl thinks that the meeting between Laria and Nocton took place on Laria's initiative. Well, if she acts differently and avoids Nocton with all her might, then she might survive. Moreover, knowing the plot, she can avoid all the places where I could accidentally cross paths with him, and the girl thinks that this way she can definitely survive. The young lady finishes writing and says it's worth a try. The main character decides to take advantage of the fact that she knows all the events of the novel, because thanks to this, she will be able to change the life of Laria Sherwood. The main character thought that she would secure a bright future for herself, but everything did not go according to plan. After all, one morning a tiny crack appeared in her plan, and then it all began to fall apart at the seams. A young lady came into the room where her family was eating. Her mother claimed that the girl was late. The main character greeted her mother, and the woman only asked why her daughter wasn't ashamed to wish them good morning after being so late. Her father worked so hard away from them for the benefit of the whole family, she is an ungrateful slacker who does not deserve even a grain of rice, and now she has decided to show her character even more by locking herself in the room. The woman asks whether Laria is not at all ashamed, then tells her to walk around and sit down quickly so as not to keep them waiting. The young lady agrees, but she herself thinks that this morning, just like in the original, she had to listen to her stepmother's lecture, after which everyone began to eat. 
The main character calmly sat down next to her older brother, but suddenly the boy sitting in front of her began to giggle. Laria didn't understand what was funny about this, but when she tried her piece of meat, she immediately spat it out. The boy and his mother just grinned at this, and the young lady realized that this bastard had oversalted her food. The blonde claims that this dish is a little not to her taste. She understands that nothing foreshadowed trouble because it was a completely ordinary day, the events of which she knew very well. So the stepbrothers' pranks were even expected given their relationship in the novel. The main character tells the maid to bring her a biscuit. The maid is a little shocked by this, and Laria just tells her to hurry up, after which the maid brings a biscuit and then turns to the mistress and is a little excited. He tells her to eat little by little and not rush. The main character thanks the maid for her care and thinks that the maid is so worried because she didn't really eat before. The young lady realizes that she has not eaten biscuits for a long time, but this is her favorite dish. But here, unfortunately, buckwheat flour is quite expensive. Her mother and brother just look at each other and smile, and then the woman excitedly asks what's wrong with her daughter's face. The main character thinks who could have known that a simple breakfast would show her that this is not just a novel, but a very real whole world. This incident was that very small crack. The maid only claims that the young lady has an allergic reaction to buckwheat, and the girl is a little shocked by this. The maid only adds that, fortunately, everything is not that serious, and the girl just needs to rest and exclude buckwheat from her diet. Mom asks why the girl eats buckwheat, to which she is allergic. And the younger brother claims that, of course, he always teased his sister by calling him a pumpkin head, but now her head is exactly the same as a pumpkin. Mom tells her daughter to continue to be attentive and take care of herself because she is no longer little. The main character is only in shock because she doesn't remember that Laria was allergic to buckwheat, because she didn't write anything like that in the novel and didn't write down such details for this character. The maid says that it was precisely because of this that she did not want to serve this dish to her mistress. After all, for a very long time she felt bad from biscuits, and after that she didn't ask for them at all. So the maid asks why the lady so suddenly wanted to try this dish today. But because of this, Madame scolded her severely. The main character only apologizes to the maid, and the maid asks the young lady to be more careful next time. Laria thinks that this is very different from the events described by her. The girl thinks that this is all very strange, and if you think about everything carefully, she will torture the main character, Laria. The joyful estate was returning, surrounded by red roses. The young lady even remembers describing how she danced alone among the roses. But now there is not a single flower there, let alone roses. After Togokok the girl got into the novel, she was busy adapting to this place. So I didn't even pay attention to it, but everything there is not at all as she wrote. The young lady could not even imagine that history could develop on its own. And in other words, this also means that she can meet the main character anytime, anywhere. Well, the young lady is trying to distract herself from these thoughts. She understands that there is no need to immediately think about the bad. After all, it's better for her to pull herself together and find the personal diary that Laria kept, because if she can find it, she will compare her knowledge about the novel and Laria's notes and then come up with something. Thus, consoling herself, the main character tried to grab onto the tiny hope of survival. And she ignored the growing anxiety that made her feel uneasy. The young lady realizes that this diary must be there somewhere, and a few moments later he sees him under one of the dresses. Well, suddenly I hear a maid's voice behind the door, who claims that the lady has a guest. The main character claims that she was not waiting for anyone, but the maid says that this man said that he had arrived to pick up Laria Sherwood, so is the lady sure that she was not waiting for anyone? The young lady is shocked by this and doesn't understand who it is. But then the maid claims that the man has arrived on the orders of Archduke Blackwell. The main character is a little shocked by this. She understands that she needs to read the notes quickly, because even though the plot has changed, she couldn't go and meet Nocton so quickly. But when the girl turns to one of the pages of the book, she is surprised. She wonders when she will finally be able to get rid of this suffering, and will this really happen only after death? Her father always treated her with indifference, and stepmother Hillary did nothing but reproach her for the slightest mistake and punish her. Even her own brother pretended that she did not exist at all, and Adolia's half-brother tried in every possible way to make fun of her and hurt her. In this house, she has neither support nor support. But today, she was very lucky. 
because she found an advertisement that the Blackwell family was looking for a nanny for their children. The main character reads that if Laria could get a job with the Archduke, she could live happily ever after. Unfortunately, she has no work experience, but she is confident that she can come up with something. Laria should also write a resume, and the day after tomorrow secretly send it to the Blackwell mansion. The girl wrote that she would believe that everything would work out and she would be able to leave this terrible place. The main character, looking at one of the pages, thinks how it happened that the novel she wrote has changed so much. Suddenly, a maid turns to the lady from behind the door and asks if she can come in and help her change clothes. When the young lady agrees, the maid begins preparations. She claims that she will try to cover the allergy spots with powder. Laria only thinks that even if she refused to accept the person he sent, it's not a fact that this Hertz would just give up and leave her alone. But on the other hand, if now she goes there and meets Nocton, after all, you will have to talk with him. But the girl thinks that if their meeting is inevitable, then it would be more prudent to meet him, and then decide how to proceed further, because such a plan will be more reliable and flexible, and everything will be under control. When the young lady enters the room, her mother immediately jumps up from her seat and screams her daughter's name. The main character apologizes for keeping them waiting and asks to be allowed to introduce herself, then claims that her name is Laria Sherwood. The messenger says that the girl has finally arrived, but he was waiting for her arrival. Well, suddenly the girl's mother interrupts him and tells her daughter that they need to talk in private. She turns to the young man and apologizes because she urgently needs to talk to Laria, and she hopes that the guy doesn't mind. And the message says that of course they can do it and he will wait, after which he is left alone. And when Laria and her mother go out into the corridor, the woman screams out whether her daughter wants to explain to her what the envoy from the Archduke's estate is doing there. And did the young lady send her resume hoping to become a nanny? The woman also screams why the hell Laria even decided to do this secretly. The main character just sighs and thinks that she expected such a reaction. She wonders what should be done in such a situation. Should she try to apologize? But the girl understands that this is not an option and seriously says that Mother herself said that she is an ungrateful slacker who does not deserve even a grain of rice. The woman is shocked by this, and the young lady understands that even if she didn't do it, she still can't bend under them and needs to stand up for herself. The girl claims that she made this decision because she no longer wants to remain a slacker. But then he turns to her and says that she still should have consulted with her family and not made a decision alone. But the young lady asks if they ever cared about her. These two are surprised, and the main character only asks if they manage to forget that they did not react in any way to their little sister, who had a rash from buckwheat. The girl claims that she does not remember the family being concerned about her condition. Then the young man says that he still shouldn't have made the decision alone, because their lives depend on it, not hers alone. Laria says that if this is the case, she will listen to what her brother thinks about this. The envoy sits with a cup of tea and thinks what they are discussing for so long. The brother of the main character at this time says that it is worth starting with the fact that the Blackwell family is the most respected in the Empire, and asks if his sister understands that if he makes even the slightest mistake there, then their entire family will not escape shame. The main character just thinks for a minute, and then approaches her brother. She claims that if they realize that the girl is not suitable for this role, who will not hire her anyway? but then her relatives and of course they thought, and she also tells them to finally stop pretending because she is already sick of their game. The blonde tells them to remain a family who doesn't care about anything when it comes to her, and then she heads down the stairs and sighs. Laria thinks that although she will return there later, she has made the right decision now. The girl with a smile on her face hopes that this will serve as a lesson to them, and they will no longer pester her. Well, suddenly her brother stands in front of the door, blocking the passage, the main character asks what Adolf wants, but he only asks Pumpkin why she so suddenly decided to leave home, and is it really because he teased and offended her all this time? He screams for Laria to tell her where she is going. The main character only thinks what he cares about this, and it would be better if he sat in a corner and didn't rock the boat. The girl tells the messenger that her brother is not right in the head, so it's better to just ignore him. The young lady thinks what all these games and changing shoes are for, because if he behaved like a bastard in front of his family, then in front of others, let him show what an asshole he is to them. 
The main character asks her brother what all this is for and tells him to let the guest through and to stand aside. But the guy only claims that he will never budge, and the main character, without listening to him, simply passes by. Then the young man screams her name, but the main character is not very concerned about this and simply leaves. Now, she is talking with the Archduke. The girl asks permission to tell me a little about herself. She says that she is 19 years old, and she is the second eldest in the family. Then the brunette just says that this is enough, and the young lady must have had a hard time getting there. The blonde says that thanks to the fact that the Archduke kindly sent a comfortable carriage, she got there in comfort. The young lady thinks that who would have thought that she would ever be able to see in real life a character from a novel she wrote. She could not even imagine that by prescribing his appearance, the girl created such a handsome man. But when the guy notices her gaze, she immediately turns away. The young lady realizes that she has been looking at him for too long. He looks at the main character and is silent, and then says that he read her resume. Then he claims that, to be honest, he really cares about the trash. The girl just wonders if Laria wrote it that badly. So she asks the Archduke what he thinks about what is written there. But the guy says that at least he had questions about why she mentioned sewing lessons and tea parties if it had nothing to do with work. But still, he decided to give her the opportunity to prove herself, since the young lady wrote that she could cope even with hard work, such as cleaning the house. But something tells him that the girl would rather cry with the child than calm him down. Laria wonders if this was humiliation, and taking into account the fact that before her rebirth she was a teacher in a kindergarten, then her pride was already hurt. After all, she alone took care of more than ten children, and there were only two of him so she could definitely handle it. However, there is no point in telling Nocton about this. Otherwise, she will also have to explain what's what and all she can do in this situation is pretend to be the girl from the resume. So the young lady smiles and says that maybe it is because the guy can't know for sure. The girl asks maybe he will still give her a chance and the young man claims that he will never agree to such adventures and the interview is over. Unfortunately, the whole young lady does not suit them. He also claims that she's probably tired from the road, so let her rest a little and then return back after which he leaves and wishes her a good journey. The main character looks after him, and then just rejoices and thinks that everything went perfectly. After observing Nocton, she was convinced that he had no interest in her person, which meant that she could live a happy life if she simply did not contact him. The girl thinks that now it's time to start creating her bright future in order to properly enjoy life in this world. She's glad that everything went so smoothly, and there was no need to even worry that something would go wrong. But suddenly, the young lady hears someone screams and wonders if it was a child's voice. Someone else told the young master to stop crying. He claimed that this time he would forgive, but the boy should not repeat this mistake twice, and he should control his body without making unnecessary movements. After all, all aristocrats go through this stage, and there is no way to do without physical punishment. The main character thinks who the hell punishes children like this anyway. She immediately starts running towards the screams and thinks what the hell this is. And when he opens the door, he sees two kids there in tears. Laria asks what they are doing there. When the woman swings her weapon once again, the young lady covers the children and screams for her to stop now. But the brunette only asks who the girl is and how dare she block her path. The main character says that her name is Laria Sherwood and she came for an interview for a nanny position. The woman just grins and says that this is ridiculous. So let the girl stop already and be more reasonable. Otherwise, she will think that the young lady wants to say that it is better for her to follow her orders and not the instructions of the Archduke. The young lady claims that everything is wrong and that it is because the children looked so scared. The main character, seeing the boy's wound, approaches him and asks what's wrong with his hand and whether it hurts much. The young man claims that his fingers are burning. And Laria thinks that her son lying on this as a child did it because of spilled tea. The young lady thinks how it is even possible to be so cruel, and it must be a pity she even has a heart. The girl takes him in her arms and thinks that first the boy needs to get medical help. But a woman stands near the door, blocking her path, and asks where the young lady is going. The girl claims that the boy needs to be taken to the doctor, but the woman says that she won't let it be believed. He only has a small burn on his hand. And Laria still has a chance to leave before she tells the gentleman about what she allows herself here. The blonde asks if the woman thinks that she will just turn a blind eye to raising children in such a barbaric way, allowing them to injure children. And the brunette asks whether it is possible for a stranger to understand the importance of such upbringing. 
The main character thinks how this woman infuriates her and wonders if there are people who are proud of the fact that they are sadists and also towards children. Therefore, the girl screams for the woman to take him to the doctor herself, because if help is not provided soon, then a trace may remain. But then the Archduke comes into the room and asks what it means to provide help and what is happening there. He says that the girls could be heard a kilometer away, so let them take the trouble to explain what kind of commotion happened there. But then he says that the boy seems to have a wound, so they will postpone the discussion until later, and first they need to take him to the doctor as the lady suggested to her. The doctor, treating the boy's wound, says that it's good that they didn't delay and immediately brought the gentleman to him, otherwise painful blisters might have appeared. And the main character just sighs and thinks that it's very good that they managed to do it. But then someone addresses her by her full name, which turns out to be the Archduke. He says that the girl, of course, was right when she said that he needed to be taken to the doctor. Well, he tells her to explain one thing, and that is why the guest interfered in the internal affairs of the house. The main character understands that even though the woman said that this was a method approved by the Archduke for teaching and raising children. But observing Nocton's reaction, we can say with confidence that he was unlikely to give such permission. Mikhail and Jeanette are not Nocton's own children at all, and his biological father is Nocton whom Nocton hated most of all, but he died, and then after giving birth, their biological mother left this world. Nocton decided to take those children away and raise them. He didn't see them often for work, and one might even say that their relationship was not warm. But despite this, he tried very hard to take care of them as if they were family, trying to give them everything they needed. The main character thinks that he will take action if she tells him about everything she saw. The girl claims that first of all, she would like to apologize for making such a fuss and interfering in someone else's business, but she simply couldn't pass by when she heard the loud cry of a child. Entering the room, she saw the tutor's cruel treatment of the children. One of them was even injured. Therefore, the young lady asks how she could turn a blind eye to this. The woman just smiles and asks what cruel means and how she thought the young lady is a gentle child which knows nothing about raising children, and all this, of course, is explained by her young age. After all, if everything is as she said, then her methods can be considered very cruel. But she, as an experienced tutor, is quite confident in the correctness of her approach, and it's better for a beginner not to get into such a pool without experience. Laria understands that this woman thinks that the girl cannot distinguish between proper upbringing and a simple beating. Although, Given that she never prescribed standards for raising children in the novel, it is not surprising that even this can be considered the norm, but she still cannot leave everything like that. Therefore, the girl tells the woman that her approach may have an immediate effect, but it also includes excruciating pain. Therefore, is it really worth applying this to children, and isn't it better to explain what their mistake is? The main character claims that she is no longer talking about the fact that they will suffer throughout their childhood and youth, but they will be brought up. The girl understands that if you constantly torture a child, he may obey, but then he will do everything to avoid being beaten. As a result, the effect will be completely opposite, and he will begin to lie, shift the blame to others, or simply show aggression. At a young age, children are generally not susceptible to punishment, and adults doing this to them will only create strong self-hatred and even greater disobedience. Therefore, the blonde says that you can't continue to do this because violence is unlikely to achieve obedience. Moreover, all this can negatively affect the psyche of children or completely destroy it, and she no longer says that in the long term, her method will have the opposite effect. The young lady thinks whether she succeeded in conveying everything to the Archduke. The brunette claims that the lady is reasoning correctly. However, he cannot agree with everything she says. Laria thinks what he is talking about. And the guy continues and says that Molly is a tutor with a good reputation. She has experience gained over the years of active training and education of many noble children, who can be assumed to become good and successful people in the future. So he has no doubts about her professionalism. And let the lady not misunderstand him because it is not because he is not serious about her concerns, but simply that Molly, as a professional tutor, could hardly have made such an elementary mistake. And the use of corporal punishment has always been considered the norm in raising and teaching children, so he sees no reason to worry. But suddenly a doctor comes up to them and asks what this means. The woman claims that although the gentleman does not have serious wounds, if you look closely, 
There are somehow too many bruises and contusions, and he thinks if she was beaten every day, she would simply stop studying altogether, because in the end, it doesn't matter why they would beat her. She asks whether such punishment was really necessary because the boy simply held the cup incorrectly. Molly claims that everything is wrong, and the gentleman made the same mistake several times, so he had to resort to such measures. But the doctor only tells the Archduke to take a look for himself, and asks if he also thinks that there was an extreme need for something like this, because there is not a living place on the boy's hand. The guy remembers how other adults put pressure on him. They argued that the guy should put aside his feelings and glorify the name of the Blackwell family, and also prove that he is worthy of being called part of the family. He puts his hand on his head and says he's heard enough. Then he tells Frederica to take the children to the room. He also tells Madame that she can leave too, and should try to avoid corporal punishment in the future, at least until Mikhail's wounds heal. The woman says that she will do as the Archduke does and give orders. After which, the man says that, as for the young lady, she can breathe a sigh of relief, because he will not hold her accountable for all this, so she can go home with a calm heart. The main heroine, I just wonder if the brunette didn't believe her words because of the professionalism of the tutor. When a woman passes by, she pushes her and whispers what a young lady, a worthless, annoying girl, and asks if she will now answer what happens when they stick their nose in just about anything. The main character turns around at this and thinks how disgusting this woman is. The doctor at this time tells the kids that he will take them to the room, and Laria thinks that Mikhail must have suffered. The girl understands perfectly well that her actions seem wrong and unnecessary to others. However, seeing how a defenseless child was being beaten, she instinctively rushed to protect him. This rebirth, she herself was in his place. When the girl was little, her older brother Nam Ju Hyun often beat her, and unfortunately there was no person who could stand up for her. The baby could only cry like poor Mikhail. The girl asked what she did to deserve such a life, and was she really destined to endure this all her life? She didn't understand why she was born at all, and wanted to throw out her emotions so much that she gave such a fate to Mikhail. And because of her, the heroes of her novel were unhappy. Laria became an obsessive psychopath, and her children suffered constant beatings. And Nocton became a man whom no one understood. The main character understands that, having seen the pain her characters had to endure, she felt a strong sense of guilt for what she had done to them. At that moment, she realized that God most likely sent her there to fix everything and give the heroes of her novel the happy ending they deserve. Therefore, the girl screams out, asking his lordship to wait. The girl claims that she does not want to leave without helping the children. She claims that she knows that she failed the interview, but really asks him to hire her as a nanny. The guy just asks if the girl has a bad memory because they have already closed this topic and there is not a single reason why he should hire the young lady. Then the girl claims that he did not indicate the characteristics of a person who would be entrusted with children and she might be ideal, so she asks for a second chance. The young lady says that since they are the children of a man like him, she thought that they would not have problems getting a proper education, so I decided that they most likely did not need a nanny in her person at all. However, she was wrong because judging by what she saw, they desperately needed a nanny. And only she is suitable for this position. But then the Duke remembers how the girl claimed that if she didn't try, she wouldn't know. And she apparently has a really bad memory. The main character thinks that what he says is true. And although she had experience working with children in the past world, unfortunately, Laria from this world does not have any experience in this area. So it will be difficult to prove her abilities and there is not a single reason for hiring a person after a sharply failed interview. Therefore, the girl thinks she can try to use facts from the novel to make Nocton interested in her candidacy. The young lady turns to the Archduke and claims that even taking into account the fact that he himself went through this and knows how painful it is. Does he still want to expose his own children to the same fate? The guy here furiously asks what she just dared to say. He claims that he kept wondering how the young lady got so much confidence, and it seems that she somehow managed to find out about it. He approaches the girl and asks what will happen next and whether she will start blackmailing him or extorting money. After all, if she really decided on such insolence, then he would finish her off right now. The girl understands that this is a completely expected reaction because he becomes more sensitive when he is reminded of long-standing events that he would like to forget. 
and perhaps she can convince him if she turns what she just said to her advantage. The young lady claims that the guy was given such a reaction, and the way he behaved when he saw the child's wounds, showing that he was taught from childhood that this is the norm. And it seems that the Archduke acted this way deliberately so that the children would not become attached to him, because he himself did not receive parental love from the cradle. But you can't do this with children, and you need to give them a helping hand before it's too late, and then create conditions for the child to grow up in love and care. After all, this is the only way he can grow up and become an independent and strong person without mental wounds and complexes. The young lady claims that this is exactly her approach to children. She certainly does not have many merits like Lady Molly. And taking into account everything previously said, she believes that she is best suited for the role of a nanny and therefore asks him to hire her for this position. The guy is silent for a bit, but then looking at the young lady again, he agrees. He claims that he will see how true her words are and gives two weeks for this. If the girl fails to convince him to take her on a permanent basis by then, she should be prepared for the inevitable consequences. The main character only confidently agrees and tells him to be sure that she will become a good nanny. A short time later, the maid takes the young lady to her room. She bows and asks to be allowed to introduce herself. And then she claims that she is Mary and from now on will be her personal maid. After which the maid says that the lady is probably tired and if she wants, she can rest there. After which the maid asks if she can bring her some light snacks. The blonde says that you shouldn't believe it's too early to rest. After which she asks if the maid can fulfill one of her requests. The girl understands that after Togacock she received the position of a nanny and her own room, she decided to immediately get down to business. And the first, and also the most important thing in this matter, is to find a common language with children. The young lady is welcomed with them and says that her name is Laria Sherwood and that she will be their nanny for today. The girl also says that she saw them before and asks if they remember this. But the kids are only silent and the main character understands that they are both wary for now. But however, she knew that this would happen, so she prepared in advance. The maid asked if the mistress wanted her to prepare a lot of snacks, but then said that the tutor Molly limited the children's snacking to once a week, saying that it was a bad habit, but Laria asked the maid to do her a favor and do it just this once. The girl understood that she also knew very well that frequent snacking is harmful to the health of children and can contribute to the formation of unhealthy eating habits, but this is the only way, because eating delicious things together can bring you closer together. The girl claims that she asked to prepare all this so that the kids could enjoy the sweets so that they can take what they want and eat without embarrassment. The boy asks if they really can, and the main character says that today, their mood has really deteriorated, and when this happens to her, she's usually sweet, so there's nothing wrong with it. And then the girl tells them to hold the cups as they are already accustomed, and not to be afraid that the cookies will crumble, because they can just enjoy the tea and treat. Then the boy takes the cookie and eats it. He says how delicious it is. The main character asks if this is true and says that she also likes oatmeal cookies with chocolate chips because they are great, after which the lady offers to take some delicious food too. The girl does so and the main character says that she tried to choose what they would like. The little girl claims that the treats are not bad and the young lady turns to Mary and tells her not to stand by and eat too. The maid is a little shocked, and when she tries the cookie, she says how delicious it is. The kids look at each other. After this, the main character thinks that she worked very hard all these days so that the children could trust her and open up. Every day, she gently and caringly woke them up, after which they went to breakfast. The girl also attended Molly's classes with them so that she could no longer beat them for anything. Molly still continued to teach five-year-olds as if they were teenagers. And fortunately, after Nocton's words, there was no more corporal punishment. The main character thinks that it has become somehow suspiciously calm, and maybe she is just screwing herself up and the woman really realized her mistake. The girl thinks that the moment will soon come when she can officially become a nanny, and being a nanny, she will improve the relationship between the children and Nocton. She will say that children should be hugged affectionately and with love. The girl also plans to help the guy get closer to the main character so that they can have a 100% happy ending. She can already imagine how the young man will thank her for the fact that everything turned out well for him, and these two will become a happy family, and since the romance will have a happy ending, then she too will be able to live happily somewhere away from them.
But now the young lady finds herself locked in a cramped room with the Archduke. The main character thinks that she could not even imagine that her actions would lead to such an outcome. Before this, it was her tenth day of working as a nanny on probation. The young lady asked if the gentleman wanted to go to sleep. She claims that she understands everything perfectly, because even at his age she didn't want to sleep either. But if the boy does not sleep, he will not grow up as healthy and tall as the Archduke. The girl offers to look at the young mistress, because she is great and is already ready for bed. After that, she tucks the boy into bed and asks what to do, and then offers to read him a bedtime story, because that way he will definitely fall asleep. But the boy only asks her to promise that when he falls asleep, the girl will not go anywhere and will remain in the room. After all, when Laria is not around, Molly's tutor comes and starts saying all sorts of nasty things. The main character asks what he's talking about, and the little girl covers her brother's mouth and screams so that he doesn't dare tell. But the boy claims that he cannot, and claims that Molly's tutor gives them some kind of tea every night. Laria is shocked by this, and the boy continues and says that even when they said that they wanted to sing it, the woman still brought it the next day. The baby then claims that this tea is very strange, and because of it, it is difficult for Mikhail to fall asleep. The main character asks if the kids happen to know what was added to the tea. Janet says it was lemon mint flavored. Initially, the woman gave this tea to both her and Mikhail, but the little girl refused to sing it and hates her, so the woman now forces only Mikhail. Molly claimed that this tea is very useful for a growing body, but since the girl doesn't want it, she won't force it. The brunette asked to keep it a secret that she was giving it to them and claimed that they would see that everyone would be pleasantly surprised at how much the young master had changed thanks to him, because they were also interested in how everyone would react to the changes that had happened in the young master's body. The young lady understands that this tea only promotes the rapid growth of children, so there is little point in hiding this. And the little girl asks Mikhail who pulled his tongue in the first place, because now they will be scolded. The boy apologizes. A short time later, the main character asks the doctor about everything. Frederica says that when it comes to lemon and mint-flavored tea, all that comes to mind is work night. Laria asks what it is, and the doctor claims that, as the name suggests, this tea is usually drunk by those who need an evening boost of energy. After all, they use ingredients that prevent you from falling asleep. Then the girl asks if they drink it instead of coffee. And now she understands why Mikhail can't sleep for so long, and it's all because of this. Well, the doctor asks why the girl asked about this. The main character claims that he was simply recommended to her. Then she asks if this part could somehow contribute to growth if given to children. The doctor just jumps up from his chair and tells the young lady to never do this, and just get the thought out of her head. Laria claims that she did not intend to do this at all. And the doctor points to the book and says that some of these strong components put a lot of strain on the heart, so you can't take it in large quantities even for adults, not to mention children. After all, this can even provoke cardiac arrest. After this, the main character thinks why Molly did this. She enters the kitchen and wonders if there is anyone there. The girl understands that when she remembers how a woman beat children, she involuntarily thinks that a woman could do things much worse. But she is unlikely to be able to ask the Archduke to interrogate her without having evidence in hand, so now it is better to start looking for evidence. But suddenly, someone's voice addresses her from behind. It turns out to be in the process. He asks what the girl is doing there. The young lady is a little surprised by this, and the guy claims that he heard a noise from the kitchen, which he thought all the staff had already left and came there. The young man asks if the girl, pretending to be a nanny, wanted to steal from him little by little. The main character claims that this is certainly not true, but she wonders whether the guy will believe her without proof or decide that she is a liar, lying on the mall if she tells Nocton the truth. Well, suddenly she hears a noise behind her, and the brunette asks if he should wait forever for an answer. He claims to repeat the question of what she is doing there, but the young lady just grabs his hand and apologizes, and then suggests that they discuss the matter later. She drags the brunette along with her, and the guy asks what she is doing because she has plenty of time. Laria understands that while she was thinking about how to answer him, it completely slipped her mind that Molly was supposed to come soon. A woman comes into the kitchen with a candle and says that it seemed to her that there was definitely someone there, and was it really just her imagination? At this time, the Archduke and the main character are in a cramped room, 
The guy is a little confused by this. He asks what the young lady is doing, but the girl just covers his mouth with her finger. She whispers that she knows that the Archduke is angry, but asks him to be patient a little because she will explain everything later. At the same moment, they hear Molly swearing. She, holding a can of tea in her hands, says that if this annoying girl had not interfered with her body, she would never have done this, because the girl was constantly hanging around with the children and sitting in class like some kind of annoying fly. Therefore, the woman failed to carry out her original plan, and it is because of her that she has to hold back. After all, to see that girl like a woman punishing children, she would immediately run to complain to the Archduke. Molly says that she could even be kicked out of there, but now she will deal with them in a different way, and soon Nocton will be heartbroken because she will destroy him. The woman, pouring tip leaves, says that initially she only intended to ruin his relationship with the children, but because of one annoying fly, she had to reconsider this plan. And now they will have to take Nocton's children away, forcing him to endure hellish torment. The main character and the Archduke are shocked by this. The young lady immediately opens the door and screams for the woman to stand. Molly, shocked, asks what she is doing there. But Nocton coldly asks if the woman did her dirty deeds right behind his back. Molly tries to justify herself and says that he understood everything wrong and in reality, but the young lady does not let her finish and claims that she cannot deceive them. The whole woman began to actively give the children tea called Working Evening, and because of this, the young gentleman could not sleep for a long time. The main character asks why the woman forced the small child to drink it, because she probably knew about its effect on the child's body. The brunette only angrily asks how the squeeze girl even managed to find out about this. But she doesn't even know what happened in this estate, because if it weren't for them, her life wouldn't have turned into such crap. Everything would have been fine if that maniacal idiot hadn't done it. Manic Jerk refers to the genetic Blackwell disease, which is passed down from generation to generation. It can manifest itself if Nocton is obsessed with a female representative, so in the novel he had to stay away from girls. But due to the strength of the appearance of the main character, his symptoms became a little weaker and the seizures were accompanied by loss of reason as well as unreasonable violence. And he calmed down when many people died. For Nocton, such a reality was like a nightmare. The young lady attributed this trait to him when she herself was broken. By granting him such a fate, she managed to ease her pain a little. But it seems that Sister Molly suffered because of her rash actions, and there could be many more victims. The brunette claims that the day he had that damn manic episode, that her sister, who worked there as a maid, witnessed this terrible sight. Although she was not physically harmed, her psyche was at an end and she went down on her own. Molly had to take care of a crazy woman every day. That's why she's now asking if the guy even knows what it was like for her. Because of him, her whole life turned into hell. The woman also asks if he thinks that he paid off by giving them his dirty money. After all, this is all damn garbage and the Archduke is a dirty hypocrite. The guy just starts to get a headache from this and he puts his hand to his head. And the woman just screams for her old normal life, Molly Owen, to be returned to her. The Archduke is about to say something, but the main character interrupts him. She claims that the woman herself is driven only by venting her own anger, and not by what happened to her sister. A short time before, the maid claimed that letters had arrived for the lady. The young lady understood that there were a lot of letters from her family. But then I saw one from Maria Owen and asked who it was. The maid said that it was for her and that it probably came to the young lady by accident. The maid claimed that this was her friend who used to work there, but she had to quit due to some circumstances, so they communicate with her like that. Then the girl asked the lady to read this letter to her, because she could not read. The young lady agreed to this, and then she told herself that she was only Mary's friend, but apparently her guesses were correct. And the girl really was Molly's younger sister. The young lady claims that Lady Maria writes regularly to her friend, that is, her personal maid. And at first Maria really suffered because she received psychological trauma. However, she decided not to dwell on it and move on. In the letter, she said that her condition had improved markedly and she was even thinking about returning to work. Laria claims that even after experiencing very severe pain, people pull themselves together and find the strength to move on, leaving the past behind. When a person experiences injuries, no matter what nature, their loved ones become more susceptible to their relatives and sometimes even suffer more than the victims themselves. This is exactly what happened to Molly. 
However, now Laria claims that Maria wants to move forward and asks why the woman is trying to take revenge. But the brunette just raises her hand and asks how the girl even dares to say such a thing. But the main character intercepts her hand and tells Molly not to let her anger get the better of her. And she asks, doesn't the woman see how Nocton is worried about what happened and whether she thinks that the guy lived there like in a fairy tale while she suffered? The young lady asks if Molly ever tried to talk to him or just ask for help since she found herself in such a situation before rushing to take revenge. The girl suggests that we be honest because Molly beat children and was obsessed with her revenge for her own sake. And sister was just an excuse. But she could have at least bothered to ask how her sister is doing, since she loves her so much that she decided to take revenge and maybe she should still talk to her sister. In a letter to the maid, Sister Molly wrote that everything was just fine with her now, and thanks to the support of the Archduke, she could attend school and had even learned to write. She claimed that, to be honest, when leaving the mansion, she thought that she would live in eternal fear. But everything was fine because she realized in time that she had the strength to move on. The woman puts her hands on her head and screams that it is too noisy, and then asks if she is doing all this for herself. Then he asks what they might even know about her. Molly grabs the knife in her hands and screams that her life is perfect. It was destroyed because of them, so they must die, after which the woman brandishes a knife. But the Archduke covers the main character with his body. But at the same moment, knights burst into the room. They cry out if everything is okay with his lordship, and then grab the woman. Molly just screams to be let go, because what a terrible curse they will pass on to the poor children. They will grow up to be monsters just like him. Therefore, Necton Blackwell doesn't deserve happiness and should be damned. It all ended with Molly being kicked out of the mansion and forbidden to even come close to it, even if Nocton felt guilty towards her and her sister. He could not forgive her for what she did to the children, so it was decided to kick her out, giving money as compensation. And two weeks have already passed since that moment. The young lady was very sorry because it was all her fault. Therefore, the girl thinks that it would be fair to send her to this novel so that she can help everyone and correct the situation. Fortunately, now everything is slowly getting better, but there is no guarantee that the future will be bright because the situation with Molly could happen again. Fortunately, in ten months, the main character will appear. The girls just need to maintain a calm atmosphere in the estate until she arrives. Yes, now her goal is the well-being of Nocton and the children, now the main character asks if she can come in, and the guy claims that he was the one who called her. For the girl to sign a contract for official employment. After all, during a two-week probationary period, she proved that she is worthy of this position. The girl can get acquainted with the conditions and the salary if something does not suit her, then let her speak. The main character looks in shock that the salary will be ten times more than originally promised. The Archduke states that before making a decision, he would like to tell her something, and then says that a seizure that is dangerous to mental and physical health could happen to him at any moment. And he leads to the fact that the girl may suffer because of him if she agrees to work here. Yunsha claims that he should have told her about this when signing the temporary contract, but then he did not have the courage, so he left it for later. The Archduke claims that he is ready to accept any of her decisions and the refusal due to such a disorder of the employer is even more prudent. The young lady noticed that Nocton's voice wavered slightly at the end. She looks at the young man and thinks that this disease is a shame for him, and it is most likely very difficult for the guy to tell strangers about it. After all, because of this, he was called a monster all his life and said nasty things behind his back. Under his lowered, thick eyelashes, Deep violet eyes filled with sadness are visible. The main character didn't want to keep him waiting for a long time, so she spoke. The girl claims that before giving an answer, she would also like to tell the Archduke something. And in fact, she decided to get a job with him without the knowledge of the family. Because she wanted to escape from there, because she was treated poorly there. The young lady told Nocton about everything that Laria had to endure in her home. In this world, there is a law that states that an unmarried girl is the property of her father until she gets married, and the father can return his daughter home even against her will, and the girl in this world is a product that the parents are trying to sell as profitably as possible. The young lady claims that she was unable to tell him about this earlier, so she apologizes, and if he refuses to hire her after that, she will understand him and accept this decision. 
The young man claims that he is well aware of this law, according to which girls are first the property of their fathers and then their husbands. However, he asks if the lady doesn't know that he is much above all these laws, and if his children can have such a good nanny like her. Then he will not allow her family to be harmed in any way by this, and even before the end of the contract, she will not be able to leave his mansion so easily. The main character just smiles and asks if she can leave the young master and madam. She eventually managed to become a nanny for the Blackwell family. Now she tells the young lady to be careful because if she runs so fast, she will fall. But then she turns to Mary and asks if something has happened because there have been a lot of workers there lately. The maid claims that it seems that the lady has not yet been told about this. But every year at this time, a luxurious reception is held in the mansion, which is why a large number of people were attracted. The young lady is a little shocked by this. She turns to the maid and asks if there will be a luxurious reception. Mary claims that the empire is the concentration of forces of the entire continent, and it is controlled by two forces. The first is the imperial family that took over the management of the internal affairs and economy of the empire. And the second is the Blackwell family, responsible for diplomatic relations and the security of the country. Each family has its own faction that does not overlap with the other. And thanks to equal rights, they have been maintaining peace in the empire for a long time. However, the Blackwell family is different from the imperial family. These she stopped interacting with the aristocracy and again strengthened her position among them. Then every spring a luxurious banquet is held. The maids are now dressing up the young master and mistress. And the main character understands that Nocton plans to introduce the children at this banquet. Mikhail says that for some reason Laria is in no mood and the girl claims that the young lady is probably worried. The main character only thinks why she is so restless because this is a simple banquet for aristocrats. But then she remembers that the Sherwood family will also attend this banquet, so the girl would really like to skip this event. The main character also realizes that around this time, Laria falls in love with Nocton. The girl understands that her family will easily find her if she appears with her children at the event, because these little angels will definitely attract a lot of attention. Suddenly the maid turns to the mistress and asks if she can tell her what doesn't suit her about the clothing design because the girl sighed so heavily. He tells the main character that there is nothing like that. She understands that she has been so thinking about her problems with her family that she has even fallen out of reality, so the girl decides to think about solving this problem later. The young lady points to one of the designs and says she likes it but it would be nice to make some minor changes. The maids ask what kind, and Laria asks if they know that the guys are five years old. Unfortunately, this design is not very convenient for children of that age. After all, for such a dress you will need a corset, and you will also need to shorten the sleeves and the dress itself, because a child can accidentally step on the hem and fall. And the main character asks how about Togo change one more thing. The maid is amazed by this and asks how the lady came up with this idea. It's brilliant. The blonde claims that she was only thinking about the comfort of the children, and there was nothing special there. The young lady adds in her thoughts that as a person coming from the 21st century, she is a little embarrassed to receive praise for such trifles. The maid only says that the mistress could have said something like that they should do as they want, and do only their direct duties. But the young lady is so caring that she helped them and provided the children with comfortable clothes. She claims that the lady is simply incredible because she saved the children from an evil woman named Molly. The maid continues to talk, and at this time a good idea comes to the young lady. The main character asks Mary if she can ask the maid for something. After all, she would like to take her uniform for the duration of the banquet. The maid asks why, madam. She has already ordered the dress. But the young lady claims that she needs exactly what the maid is wearing now. A short time later, the banquet begins. Janet and her brother introduce themselves to the guests. Aristocrats say how cute the kids are. They are also greeted with the young master and madam and states that it is nice to meet them, and also these clothes suit the little ones very well. The guys look at each other and think that Laria is watching them and wondering if they did a good job. The main character is standing on the balcony at this time. She thinks that the kids are great because they both did a good job. A little while ago, the maid asked the young lady if she wanted to disguise herself. Laria claimed that everything was so because she didn't want to be noticed by the family who would most likely arrive at the banquet, so she needed Mary's help. After this, the main character came to the children 
and asked if they had already been informed that the kids would have to attend the banquet. The boy claimed that they were told about this long before Laria's arrival. And, to be honest, at first he resisted and didn't want to go there at all, but now he's not at all scared because Laria will be nearby. The girl thinks that the young master trusts her so much and she is very touched by this. And the little girl just grunts and says that even if Laria weren't around, she would still go there. And the young lady understands that Jeanette is still wary of her, but it's not scary because if she continues in the same spirit, then sooner or later, the girl will also open up to her. The main character says that they will be alone there, and she would like to play a game with them. The kids became interested in this, and the young lady claims that during the event she will disguise herself, and they will have to find her in the crowd. The little girl asks if this is some kind of hide-and-seek. Laria says that this is true, and there will also be one important task in the game, because you need to greet the guests properly, keeping their posture straight and observing etiquette and if they cope with everything and find her. They can ask for any gift, after which the main character asks if they want to play with her. And the kids say what they want, and at the event they behave appropriately. The main character thinks that she would really like to stand with them and help them on their first appearance. But the best she can do is let them adapt to everything on their own. But at least she helped by starting this game. This way they will have fun and can adapt on their own. A couple of aristocrats are whispering to each other. One of them claims that it seems that the rumors are in her rally since the Archduke is now in good health, as the woman argued that there is no need to rush to conclusions because they don't know anything for sure. The man, asking whether the woman thinks that he would officially represent the children if he was unhealthy. And this is nonsense because the Duke is completely healthy and who even decided that he was almost dead. The main character is shocked by these words. But suddenly a very familiar voice addresses her, and the girl realizes that it turns out to be her brother. The guy asks if she could bring him another glass of wine. The young lady apologizes and says that she is not responsible for the drinks, but she hopes that he did not see her. And the young man asks if the maid can then ask the one who is responsible for them, and thinks what kind of answer this is. The main character understands that she needs to hurry up and get out of sight before he realizes that it is her. But then the guy tells her to wait because the girl has a familiar voice and asks if she knows Laria by chance. But the young lady just shoves the tray in his face. The guy in shock asks what she's doing. But the main character runs away and screams that they know, know Laria. The young man says that he didn't even have time to say the name, but the girl immediately realized that it was Laria. Therefore, he asks if his sister thinks that her words ring true. The main character screams that she is telling him the absolute truth, and the guy asks why she is running away then, and besides, he doesn't remember that the maids were allowed to lighten their hair that way. The blonde asks if the girl thinks that he didn't recognize her. Laria thinks why she was discovered so quickly. And shouldn't everything in the novel work out well for the villains? The guy asks her not to run away, because they need to talk. But the young lady doesn't listen to him and turns the corner. The girl thinks about what she should do and whether she should just go into the first room she comes across and lock the door, and then Norman will bring his parents. Suddenly, someone grabs the young lady by the hand and drags her away. Her brother jumps out from around the corner and screams for Laria to stop running away and talk to him but then he sees that there is no one in the corridor. When the young man passes by the next room, he sees that the door there is open, and also his sister's glasses are lying on the floor. The young man immediately bursts into the room and screams that he knows that his sister is there. But what he sees there confuses him, and the guy immediately closes the door and also screams out an apology for disturbing him. The main character was in the room with the Duke, a short time ago, when the banquet was just beginning, the Archduke was sitting at his place. He thought that at the banquet there was always music that gently envelops the ears, a little bitter wine, and most importantly, something without which not a single reception would take place. This is the climb of a nobleman, and the fact that he cannot afford to say or do anything unnecessary. The young man thinks how tired he is of all this, and at this time one lady turns to him. She says his lordship has a poor complexion. The guy replies that it's due to lack of sleep and it's nothing. The man next to him says that the day of hunting for the flying Misha is coming soon and his lordship must be excited. Well, by the way, his grandiose plan to catch them is about to begin to be implemented and he understands the gentleman's feelings. The woman asks if this shouldn't be said in a whisper 
and the man screams that it is obvious that victory is already in their pocket, and does she think that the bats, having heard the rumors, hide in the corners. He also asks if the Archduke thinks the same. Ah, uh, the main character responds that if you think about it, wasn't their plan discovered in the past, because the man was chatting about it at every turn. And what's more, they haven't even started yet, so he thinks it's too early for a toast. After this, an awkward atmosphere hangs in the air and the woman decides to interrupt it. The lady claims that, in truth, before doing anything, the Archduke should have gotten a wife. The young man is with his husband and does not want to drink this wine, so he puts his glass in its place. He realizes that he only stabbed them a couple of times and not very much. They decided to start right away with heavy artillery. One of the guests says that if compared with the imperial couple, who are already married, then from the point of view of the inhabitants of the empire, they will become very successful. The main character thinks that if it were up to him, he would get rid of all these old foxes. But then he sees Laria running away from the hall. Therefore, the main character rises from his seat and says that he will probably go. The woman asks if his lordship is leaving already. But the young man claims that it seems his maid is going to run away before the end of the contract. All his interlocutors are a little surprised by this answer. And now the main character is with the Archduke. The young lady pushes him back and asks if the guy has gone crazy and is it possible to appear like a jack-in-the-box and grab the lady in his arms. The guy claims that he saved the girl from the fate of being forcibly seen and asks if this is her gratitude. With a serious look, he tells the lady that, taking this opportunity, he would like to make her an interesting proposal. And then he asks if she wants to get engaged to him, but suddenly the young lady's brother knocks on the room. He screams that he knows that Laria is inside, so she will come in now. The main character only asks the guy why he suddenly asked her about the engagement, and invites the guy to let her go first, and then talk. The young man claims that, as he thought, explanations are needed, and Laria thinks that this is not why he proposed to get engaged to Togoni, and of course they are needed. The guy claims that the young lady must have heard rumors about the imminent death of the Archduke. The main character says that she heard about this today in the banquet hall, but this is simply ridiculous. So the young lady asks what this has to do with the engagement, and the guy says that then she probably knows too. That the root of these rumors is the imperial family, because unlike the imperial family, that, thanks to an early marriage produced a crown prince, the Blackwell family is an interesting catch in the eyes of society who love gossip. And so rumors spread that Archduke Blackwell's mind was shaken, and this gossip, passed from mouth to mouth, grew like a snowball. This is how a rumor appeared about the imminent death of the Archduke and the collapse of the Archduchy. Laria asks if it's working out that in order to show society that everything is fine with the Blackwell family and to save her from the attacks of the Sherwood family, the guy offers them to get engaged. The young man replies that he likes the way Laria grasps everything on the fly. The brother of the main character, listening to all this, is a little surprised. He thinks what the words mean that the Archduke likes it when she grabs him and what we are talking about. The guy thinks that the brunette could seduce his sister and persuade her to become a maid, so he immediately screams that the truth will come and counts to three. The main character asks the brunette if her brother heard her conversation, and the guys answer that because of the thickness of the doors. It was almost impossible to hear everything in detail. But then her brother starts counting down. The young lady thinks that she should stay there and help Nocton, and then he will have a better chance of a happy ending. And if she returns to the Sherwood family now, her life as Laria will become unpredictable. The girl understands that even if this is not what she wanted, she claims that she agrees. The guy smiles in response to this and says that this is great. He then smears lipstick on her lips and says that from the moment they leave this room, they will become loving souls who enjoyed a secret meeting. After this, the main character opens the door. Her brother asks if she has finally decided to meet her brother. But when he sees her face red with embarrassment, he asks what happened to her. The main character tells him to just pretend that he didn't see anything, because he already disturbed her. Laria claims that she was supposed to take care of the young lady and gentleman, but fearing that the family would recognize her, she disguised herself. However, the brother surpassed himself and prevented even her secret meeting with her lover. The blonde screams that she's lying again and it's all nonsense, because in fact the girl doesn't want to come back and that's why she's lying. But the father was also very angry, so they should return immediately. He grabs the young lady's hand and screams for her to resist and follow him, but the Archduke approaches them, 
He claims that he sent the young lady first because she said she would figure it out on her own, but he never thought that his bride would be treated like this. Her brother, shocked, asks if the Archduke wants to say that Laria is really his bride. The brunette claims that this is so and asks if there is any problem with this because the disdain of the Sherwood family towards the lady is well known to him, and he protects her as a groom. The brothers ask Mr. Archduke for forgiveness, but says that even if they are engaged. Then his sister is still a member of the Sherwood family, and according to the law of the empire, the bride can be considered a member of the groom's family only if both families agree to this union. The young man squeezes his sister's hands and says that according to the rules, the engagement that took place with the participation of the Sherwood family should not take place. But suddenly he screams in pain. It turns out that the Archduke grabbed his wrist. The guy claims that therefore the Sherwood family respects the Blackwells, but apparently does not want to accept him as a son-in-law. And this turns out to be a little funny. The young lady's brother is very scared by this, and then says that everything is wrong and apologizes. At this time, a servant approaches a man in a robe. He apologizes and says that they finished work later than planned. The stranger only asks if the preparations are completed. And the servant replies that yes, and as soon as the main ceremony begins, they will continue as planned. The man says that this is good, and they can return to their places and also be ready. After which the servant leaves, and the stranger thinks that the night is dark today, and she is just right for the Blackwell family to fall. At this time, the Archduke continues his conversation with the brother of the main character. He says that if the young man understands everything, then let him tell his parents, and they will probably go. The brother screams for Laria to wait because he still has something to tell her. The Archduke only asks if everyone in the Sherwood family has a bad memory, because it seemed to him that he explained it clearly. The brother claims that he, of course, understood everything, but asks to be allowed to talk to his sister. The main character turns to his lordship and asks if he will leave them for a while, because, as her brother said, they have not finished the conversation with him yet, and if something happens, she will immediately call the Archduke. Then the young man agrees and says that he will wait nearby, and if he is needed, then let the young lady call him. The brother thanks Laria and says that now that he knows that the girl is the bride of the Archduke, he will not forcibly take her home. But just don't let her announce her engagement at this reception. The main character asks why she shouldn't do this, and the young man claims that some nobles supporting Blackwell want to go over to the side of the imperial family, and there were rumors that something was going to happen at this reception. But a villain could be hiding in the hall, and if they find out that the girl is the bride of the Archduke, this could put her in danger, so the sister should be careful. The young man claims that he just wanted to tell her this, and that's why he delayed her. But now he has to go. Laria is a little surprised, because Norman, who had no business worrying about her, the girl wonders if he is trying to make amends in this way. But then he thinks it's a little weird. The young lady thinks that, given Nocton's character, he will use their engagement at the right time. Also, the guy is unlikely to introduce her as his bride today for no reason, but the girl wonders whether Nocton knows that there may be people in the mansion who want to harm him. Therefore, the girl turns to the Archduke. The guy asks what happened, and the young lady tells him to just imagine. What would happen if he heard that a bad person had entered the mansion? The young man claims that he now understands what his brother told Laria. And then he says that this is his mansion, and asks how can he not know that a rat got into it? The young man says that making the traitors think that they have an advantage, and hiding the fact that he knows about everything, is some kind of plan. And the villains have no idea that they have fallen into their own trap. The main character asks if this means, in order to catch the traitors by surprise and catch them, the Archduke specifically allowed dangerous people to enter the mansion. The guy asks what's wrong with this, because the knights of the Blackwell family also disguised themselves and mixed in with the crowd, so there's no need to worry about safety. But the girl screams that the young lady and gentleman are also there, despite the fact that the knights are monitoring the situation. But what will the guy do if something happens to them, and now is not the time to be idle? The main character asks who the girl even takes him for, because they quickly find out who they are as soon as they enter the banquet hall. The young lady claims that such disregard for safety leads to accidents, and he, as a father, should be ashamed of his indifferent attitude towards the safety of his children. The young lady holds out her hand and says that if he is even a little ashamed, then let him go to the banquet hall with her right now. 
At this time, the kids are among the nobility. The girl asks where Laria is, because she keeps looking around and doesn't see her. But Michael tells Janet to look at the stairs. And when they do this, they see Laria walking with the Archduke. People immediately start whispering. One woman says that the Archduke himself is accompanying the young lady, and she is seeing her for the first time. The woman also asks if anyone knows who this lady is. The main character thinks that she came with Nocton, so all eyes are now directed at her. The rumors continue. One of the people says that it is immediately clear that the girl wants to seduce the Archduke, and that's why she stuck to him. Another man claims that the girl wants to raise her status at the expense of such a man, and this may be female hopelessness. Although there are many parents who are ready to sell their child to a richer man, they claim that the girl is of no use, so they probably just threw her away. Jeanette turned to her. The young lady approaches them, and the boy says that a little earlier, he found a person with the same hair color as hers, and the little girl claims that she immediately guessed that it was not Laria. The main character thinks that she is very lucky to meet children so quickly, because she almost cried in public. But the young lady wonders how Nocton is going to identify the traitors among all these people. A short time later, everyone is already sitting down at the table. The Archduke says that spring has come again, and he is glad to meet again with distinguished guests. However, the opposing forces that were in hibernation woke up again and made a fuss and the guests must also have heard the rumor about the fall of the Blackwell family. The young man asks if they also think that he has gone mad and is unable to fulfill his duty. Or maybe they think that he is mocking the servants, because if so, according to his hearing, he has limbs to simply run away if necessary. He asks to be allowed to show people the whole truth about the Blackwell family, and then looks at the main character. The girl wonders if he is asking her to stand up now. The Archduke only takes her hand and says that if he had gone crazy, how could he have fallen in love with such a beautiful and graceful creature that so suddenly invaded his life? The main character is shocked by this, and her parents are also excited by this. The young lady's brother just sighs heavily, and the main character thinks that she, too, did not know that the Archduke would do such a thing. The young man just hugs her and says that he represents the girl who vowed to love him as much as he will give her to the end of time. Then he shouts for everyone to greet Lady Laria Sherwood. The young lady thinks that he said that he would announce it later. Everyone at the table claps and celebrates the Blackwell family. Laria thinks that in a word, Nocton declared her to be the future Archduchess. The girl thinks that the expressions on people's faces change like pictures in a movie, and the emotions were different. The parents, who simply couldn't believe it, were a little scared. And Norman was clearly concerned about her safety. Someone was sincerely happy for the bright future of the Blackwell family. And someone else had an expression on his face as if he had hit the jackpot. But suddenly, the young lady notices something strange. After all, this guy looks up and smiles. But when the main character raises her head, she immediately understands what is happening. She pushes the Archduke aside, and at the same moment, a chandelier falls into the place where he was standing. The main character ends up in the hands of the Archduke. The girl tells his lordship to protect the children. At this time, a guy comes up behind them and thinks that some woman jumped out and disturbed him. But he thinks that it doesn't matter. After all, he needs to take advantage of the situation and attack the Archduke. But he certainly won't have time to react. The brunette only screams out the name Bernil, and then the knight does not allow the villain to do what he intended. The servant claims that he did not think that it would all go so far. He asks for your lordship's forgiveness. Bernil Tysbeg is the deputy commander of the Blackwell family knights. He says that he could not even imagine that someone would decide to attack the master in such a way. The young man claims that he wanted to remove the weeds later because the preparation took a long time. However, due to the current situation, this must be addressed first. At the same moment, knights enter the room and lay everyone involved in this crime on the ground. The Archduke says that two ledgers were discovered in Baron Barnes's estate, and one of them, of course, was fake, and it is the one on which the man reports to them. Brunet says Earl Bradley also committed crimes in the form of long-term tax evasion and drug smuggling, and the Marquis Franklin was involved in the slave trade and illegal arms trade. Others are also guilty of atrocities. Therefore, the Archduke says that the aristocrats, who were supposed to set an example, behave worse than any rabble and it seems they have decided to break through the bottom by finally encroaching on the life of Lady Sherwood. The young man holds the main character in his hands, and the nobles ask how the guy dares to reproach them with this, 
if he himself is not so pure, they also ask if he thinks that no one knows what a psycho he is who wants to finish off everyone right and left. The Archduke claims that pride really destroys a person, and having decided to prick him harder, they went and gave themselves away. And once they have heard the confession, the aristocrats will be punished to the full extent of the empire without going to trial. The Baron asks his lordship to wait, but Nocton only approaches all the other guests. He tells them to listen to him. After all, are the words of the aristocrats really true if a person in his right mind decided to protect a psycho like him and even sacrificed for this? With your life. He says that guests should always believe only their eyes, because thanks to them, people today manage to see that the Blackwell family is still as powerful as before, and they should also listen to their hearts, because only thanks to it, they will be able to distinguish black from white. People immediately kneel and praise the Blackwell family and pledge eternal loyalty to the family. A little time later, the main character opens her eyes. But the first thing she sees is her mother and brother. The blonde asks how the girl feels. Laria Jara wonders what her family is doing there. And when he gets up, he sees the wound in my hand. Her mother claims the doctor said the girl sprained her wrist in a fall. But the main character only asks what they are all doing in her room. Then the father turns around and says that he is very disappointed with Laria. He also asks how the girl dared to tarnish the impeccable reputation of the Sherwood family. The main character asks what he is talking about and whether she did something that could tarnish the family's reputation. After all, if this is because of the engagement to the Archduke, then she can explain everything. The girl says that her father knows even without her that if engaged people start living together, then this means... But her father does not let her finish her sentence and says that everything is true, but he is more worried that she apparently did not even bother to think with her head before accepting the Archduke's offer. The father asks if the girl thinks that with her knowledge of tea drinking and embroidery, she can marry a person from the highest echelons of power. And did she even think a little, because among aristocrats, everything is not so simple. The father asks if the girl believes that she can match the Archduke without having any knowledge of his world, because first society will destroy her and her family will follow. He says to the girl, stop acting like a capricious child and return home, and then orders his son to prepare the cart because they are leaving. Well, suddenly a voice turns to them and asks if he understood correctly that the guys want to take Laria away. It turns out it's a baby. She screams that the girl is her nanny, and they won't move her out of meat until the baby gives them her consent to do so. Lady's father just leans over to the little girl and says that he is glad that the young lady loved his daughter so much. However, according to the law, he has every right to take her from there. But the Archduke appears from behind and asks how long the man plans to hide behind the law and hope that he understands that he himself is violating it. After all, the young lady's father completely forgot that Laria entered into a contract with him, and the law, as I remember, says that in this case he has no right to take her away. And the girl has been there for quite a long time, but they only realized it now, so the guy asks if they are really planning something behind his back, because if they really wanted to return the young lady, then they should have done it on the day of her arrival there. And he was also wondering if they were at all interested in what Laria herself wanted. After all, he already understood everything himself that they did not do this, so he will take care of it himself. The young man turns to Laria and asks if she would like to return home with her family. The main character only says with a serious expression that she does not want to return at all, and this makes her relatives turn to stone. As they leave, the Archduke asks if the young lady is okay, the girl says yes and asks what happened and, more importantly, whether the children are okay. The brunette says that the children are fine and the girl doesn't have to worry about them because their protection was and is still the primary task of the knights. They failed to catch the organizer of the assassination attempt, but everyone involved in the case has already been caught, so his capture is only a matter of time. The girl says that if that's the case, that's good. But the young man then apologizes he says that if he had not introduced her as his bride and kept her close to him, then Laria would not have suffered. She gets up from her seat and says that since she suffered because of him, he will give her an indefinite leave so she cannot worry about work and have a good rest. But the girl claims that, on the contrary, he saved her, because when she pushed him, the guy grabbed her by the waist and pulled her towards him. 
And if not for this, the young ladies would hardly be able to sit there and talk to him with a smile on their faces. But she will still think carefully about whether to forgive him for announcing his engagement without her consent. The young man ruffles the hair on her head and says that enough chatting and the girl had better rest, but it's time for him because the job is not waiting. Laria says that she seemed to have embarrassed the Archduke because he ran away, his heels sparkling. Mikhail excitedly addresses the young lady. Then the girl asks if the young master is okay because he was probably very scared, but the boy only asks if Laria is okay. The girl tells him not to worry because everything is fine with her, but then Jeanette turns to the young lady and asks her to tell her if she is on their side. The main character is a little puzzled by this question and asks what the girl means. The little girl says that she protected them from Molly, and today she even saved her father. Laria thinks that she finally understands why it was so difficult to win over Janet. After all, from childhood she became the protector of her vulnerable brother so that no one could offend him, and the five-year-old child had to close his heart. Because all the adults seemed to her to be as cruel as Molly. The main character understands that in childhood she was the same as her. Only she didn't have someone to protect, and the words flew out of her mouth before the girl had time to think about the answer. The blonde says that everything is exactly like that, and she will always be on their side. For Janet, this meant that she could now relax and not be suspicious of everyone around her. And she can behave like an ordinary child, because Laria protected them. The little girl immediately runs up to the main character in tears, and says that she was very worried about her when she got hurt, and then they wanted to take her home. Laria thinks that perhaps deep down in her soul, she wanted to become for Janet the person she herself needed as a child. That's why she says she will never leave the guys. But a little time later, she is in the Archduke's office. The guy asks how she feels, and the young lady thanks him for his concern and replies that she is already better, and she thinks that next week she will take off the bandage. The young man claims that this is good, and he called her to talk about their engagement, because after the dinner party, many were interested in who the young lady was and how they met. But they can't be unprepared. The young lady claims that if someone had not suddenly decided to announce their engagement without asking her, then they could resolve this issue without any haste, but first she suggests dealing with the separation clause. The guy is shocked and asks what she said and what she means by breaking up. But the main character only says that if someone has a loved one, then, for the sake of each other, they can part. The young lady realizes that, as in the novel, Nocton will definitely meet the main character and fall in love with her at first sight. But if then her existence somehow interferes, then the guy might go against her, so it's better to be prepared for anything. The blonde says that Nocton will be in a difficult position if he later finds someone he actually loves, so she would like them to clarify this point. The young man agrees and says that he understands, and after a little time the girl says that she thinks this is enough. They refuse to go to the interview for the video. She said that at the first meeting they have a script according to which they should speak. The brunette says that they have decided on this, but what about working as a nanny? Because now they don't have a permanent tutor, and he thinks that it will be difficult for the young lady alone. The blonde says that everything is fine, and it's not that difficult to cope with two people. And she thinks that it would be nice if the Archduke changed his attitude towards them. The young man is already asking what's wrong with his attitude. But the girl claims that when she first came there, the children were afraid of him, and if he was more affectionate with them, the baby would open up to him. The Archduke asks what kindly means, since he treats them so well. He always makes sure that they are dressed only in good clothes, and they fed us quality food. Laria says that this is good in material terms, she asks him to treat them more kindly than them emotionally. The girl wonders if Nocton asked what the kids did today, and also whether he praised them for studying hard and invited them to play together. The young man says no and asks if this is a problem, and the main character then asks if it is difficult for him to communicate with children. The guy is silent for a bit, and then asks what he should do, since he didn't even talk properly to any children at all. But the young lady tells him to start smiling, Nocton doesn't understand what she's talking about, and the girl says that if it's difficult for him, then let him start with a smile while talking with them. After all, he probably never smiled in front of them, and that's probably why they are afraid of him. And also, as far as the girl remembers, his smile is quite strange. The young man only says that they have never told him anything like this, and asks what they are doing with his smile. 
Laria just sighs and asks who can tell what kind of person you are to the Archduke himself. Then she smiles and tells him to try to smile like he's drawing an arc with the corners of his lips. It will be difficult at first, but he will definitely seem kinder in the eyes of their children. The guy claims that he didn't know they needed that, and then he decides to smile anyway. And while doing this, he asks if it works, but the main character is only scared by such a smile. She thinks what to do because this grin is even worse than the one she saw at the reception. The guy puts his hands on his head and says that he knew that nothing would work out, but the young lady says that he simply has little experience, so he shouldn't be embarrassed because everything is not that bad. The young man asks when he was embarrassed, and the girl replies that she must have misunderstood. After that, they tried to do it again. The fact that Nocton agreed to practice smiling was a little unexpected for the girl. The young lady thinks that he must also have a desire to be affectionate with someone. Laria thinks that the possibility that Nocton will become an affectionate person does not mean that this story can go beyond the framework of a fatal romance and have a happy ending. A short time later, the Archduke caught the culprit of this incident. He argued that the Viscount's necklace would be an excellent collector's item. And even though this is a Viscount's estate, there are so many precious stones as if it were the Emperor's palace, and he must have worked hard to collect them. Or it would be more correct to say that he worked hard, stealing the Archduchy's military supplies and selling them to his enemies. He throws the jewelry in the face of Viscount Waldman. The young man asks what the ex-duke is talking about. After all, he will have to answer for all this, and is it really possible to do this without evidence? But Nocton says that there is something in which the young man is mistaken, because he is not the only one who is capable of sending a spy to the enemy. After which he throws the papers at the Viscount and says, according to the report of his man, who a whole collection of novels is not enough to tell about all the crimes that the Viscount committed. But the theft of military supplies and their sale to enemy countries is just the beginning, because there was also the slave trade and the import of drugs. And the worst thing is that he tried to harm the Archduke, and like Nocton Blackwell, who is the sword that protects the Empire, orders, execute Viscount Waldman for his crimes. The man just lies on the ground and smiles and says that the Archduke is really funny. After all, he behaves as if he is punishing the criminal, but in fact he is taking revenge on him for trying to finish him off. And they both know what this whole masquerade is for. Waldman asks how someone who carries out personal revenge under the guise of the law and putting a ball to the enemy's neck in the middle of the night differs from him united by money, power, and power. But the Archduke only tells Bernil to hand over the sword and then claims that the Viscount is only a loyal pawn of the Imperial family. But the man asks if the Archduke thinks that this will all end when he dies. The guy screams furiously that the Blackwell family will go and his will will be done. When the main character swings his ball, the Viscount's last words are the glorification of Emperor Gunton. A little time later, the knight, walking along the corridor, thinks how much time it will now take to sort out the possessions and property of the Viscount. But their master worked so much, but he did more and more. Well then, another knight asks if the deputy commander saw the expression on the commander's face after the execution. The young man wondered how the emperor managed to make the Viscount so devoted, and the archduke after the execution only smiled, wiping drops of red liquid from his face. The second in command asks what his colleague is talking about and whether the archduke was smiling. After this, he asks if their master is so serious that there will be a total war with the emperor. At this time, the archduke is sitting in his room with a mirror in his hands. He practices smiling again. In fact, he simply wasted no time and practiced smiling sweetly. A short time later, through a magic ball, the Emperor was informed that Viscount Waldman had also been executed and an all-out war with the Archduke was inevitable. His Majesty just smiles and says that if they destroy this monster before it starts, they will not suffer losses. The young lady understands that enough time has passed for all the wounds of the children to heal and heal, after which she began to gradually educate them using her own methods. She gave the children a piece of paper with circles drawn on it. Mikhail says it looks beautiful and asks what it is. But the little girl just doesn't understand what's beautiful about this, and the main character claims that this is a checklist for good behavior. And if they do good deeds or listen to her carefully, the girl will stamp them. Janet asks why they need to collect these seals at all. And the young lady says that if they can collect all the seals, then she will fulfill any of their wishes. Kids are very interested in this. Mikhail asks if Laria can fulfill any wish. The girl replies that everything is true, 
She will fulfill only those desires that she can do. The boy says that this is very cool and hugs Laria. And the girl just says that this is stupidity, but since Mikhail liked it and wants to try it, then so be it, she will keep him company. The main character understands that the little girl still cannot be honest with herself. The young lady understands that the important detail, of course, is the reward with help, which can guide the children in the right direction, and they are divided into two main categories. These are material items that may include sweets or pocket money. And emotional is the joy of being able to collect all the seals and receive praise from an adult. At first it may seem that there is nothing special in this approach, but this is not so, because although at first children usually worry about the material part of the issue, over time, the emotional component begins to prevail. The girl thinks that this is a classic approach to preschool children of her world. But here she is using this method for the first time, so she is wondering if it will be possible to introduce it here. The maid, looking at the paper, says that it is impressive. After all, she had never heard of a system in which if you do a good deed or are obedient, you will receive a seal. She also asks Madam, this came to mind because it's amazing. The main character asks what she is talking about, and then claims that she just thought a lot about how to raise children well, also interested in pedagogy from childhood. The maid says that she is simply surprised that the mistress has not yet become the best teacher in the world, because with her knowledge and approach, this is quite possible. However, a little time later, something happened that neither she nor Mary expected at all. The maid asks the gentleman if he just shared his water with the flower. The young man replies that yes, because he just thought that the plant was very thirsty, so he decided to share it with him. The main character and the maid are touched by this and say that the young master is so caring for the little flower, and he will most likely be even kinder with people, so the young ladies are very happy about this. After all, this means that when the boy grows up, he will be a good person. The maid says that the lady can put a stamp on him for this because the young master deserves it. Mikhail asks if he really will get a seal, but then the girl jumps forward and asks why only her brother will get the seal. The blonde thinks that she did not foresee this, and if she only stamps Mikhail, then Janet will most likely be upset. But if she doesn't deliver, then it will be dishonest, because the boy has fulfilled the conditions she set. Therefore, the girl says that she will give the young master one seal, and the boy is very happy about this. And the little girl asks why he alone will get the seal, because she wants it too. The main character pats her on the head and says that she will put a seal on the young mistress when she fulfills the conditions for receiving the seal. The baby sulks in response to this, but a little later she approaches Laria and claims that she is also watering the plants, so she should also be given a stamp. The maid asks if the girl watered all the plants in the mansion, and the main character thinks that she doesn't know if this is due to the fact that she is older, but the girl seemed to be deliberately trying to outdo Mikhail's act in scale. This is, of course, an unusual approach to the issue, but the deed is definitely kind. Laria says that the young lady will put a seal. Then the girl is very happy about this stamp, and the young lady thinks whether she made the right decision because she already doubts that it was worth entering this checklist. A little more time later, Mikhail was eating his cookies, but suddenly he noticed how another boy was looking at him as if he also wanted this delicacy. Then Mikhail approached the baby and told her that the boy was probably hungry, so let him take it. His father came up and told the master that he could not accept his appearance as a simple servant. But Mikhail claims that everything is fine and let the boy not be afraid, and also rather take it because it is a gift. The two took leave of the boy and thanked him for such a generous gift. But a little time later, Janet was already knocking on this boy's door. And then she pointed to the rumor behind and claimed that it was all for him. The main character understands that in the end, it all turned out to be a competition to obtain seals. The guys competed with each other, and the girl thought that it looked like they wouldn't stop until someone came out the winner. At this time behind him, the boy brings gifts to his uncle and says that he was given so much today, and he is sure that the saintly agent did her best. The man, with tears in his eyes, says that the boy is right, and saint agent decided to bless him. But the baby is just lucky, so he should appreciate it. The main character thinks that she of course doubted it for a long time, but to think that the method is still good because the children still made someone happy. The girl also wonders when Nocton will return. And a little later, the servants were already greeting their master. The main character was already observing the kids' reactions. Mikhail greeted his father, and although his voice trembled a little, but the girl understood that there was still progress, 
Now Mikhail no longer cries with fear at the sight of Nocton. The Archduke asks if everything was fine, and Laria says that everything was fine with the young lady and gentleman. Then the guy asks how things were with her. The main character does not understand what he is talking about. And the young man repeats and says that he asked Laria if everything was okay. The girl understands that he has returned from a long business trip and first of all asked the nanny if everything was okay, not the children. But then she realizes that to everyone else they are engaged, and the guy probably asked, worried about what others would think. The young lady claims that she is grateful to him and she has been doing well. Then he says that he understands and leaves. Janet then invites Laria to return to their game. And the main character, with a smile on her face, says that they can continue the fun game with the checklist. The blonde thinks that the Archduke has been gone for quite a long time, so for some time he will be busy with accumulated affairs and will probably call her later. But after 30 minutes, she was already in the young man's office. The main character was wondering what happened and why she was called. And besides, without children. Laria thought that he first needed to sort things out, but then, seeing how the guy's hands were shaking... He thinks that he is a little nervous, but the young man then begins to speak and claims that he would like to say first, that I didn't forget about her request. Laria asks what request he is talking about, and the young man asks if she has already forgotten, and didn't she ask him to practice smiling. The main character herself cannot help but smile because of this, but then immediately covers her mouth so that the Archduke does not notice this. But the young man only angrily asks if he, in her opinion, is funny. The young lady claims that there is nothing like that, and the young man is right because she really asked him about it. Laria realizes that she almost forgot about it because of all the commotion with the seals, but his remark that he did not forget about the request is so similar to Nocton. The girl says that she is glad that the young man did not forget about her request and asks how much he trained. The guy claims that she will understand when she sees it for herself, and the young lady thinks that this is a strong statement so she tells him to show what he has learned. Then the young man smiles, and the main character looking at this is a little embarrassed. The girl thinks what happened during this time, because no matter how much Nocton was her type, this is too much. The guy asks what's wrong with the young lady, and the girl just looks away and says that he really tried hard and she's impressed, and in her thoughts she asks who knew that his smile would make her heart skip a beat. At this time, the main character rises from his seat and approaches the young lady. The brunette takes her chin and asks how he could take this request carelessly. The main character is even more embarrassed by this and then says to let her go. The Archduke does so and then asks if his smile has improved. The girl says that she is really surprised and this natural smile suits Nocton very well. But if he practices a little more, he will become the best smile in the Empire. And judging by the fact that he was able to show such a gentle smile, the guy must have really trained tirelessly. The young man just turns around and says that he doesn't really care, but the main character asks his lordship why he looks away. She then claps her hands and says that this is enough anyway, and now it's time to move on to practice. The young man asks what she is talking about, and the main character says that he is not going to show this beautiful smile only to her. After that, she tells the kids that now they will go to meet his lordship, because yesterday he returned from a business trip and probably missed them a lot. Mikhail asks if they cannot go, and the little girl says that she doesn't want to and won't go either. The main character thinks that she is taking the children to the dentist. Therefore, the girl claims that his lordship just wants to see them, and she will go with them and then asks if the kids agree. The boy says that he believes the young lady, and Janet screams that she will go too. A short time later, they are already at his lordship's door when the main character opens the door. The kids are a little surprised because they see a table full of sweets, and the Archduke is sitting next to it. He tells the children to sit down, then the kids do so, and the main character sits down next to them. The Archduke asks how they are doing and if the kids were doing well. The guys are a little shocked by this because they did not expect such a question. And the main character whispers that everything is fine, and he just has to do it. A little time ago, when she was walking with the Archduke, the young man said that he did not understand what would change if he changed the kerosene lamp to a magic one. After all, none of those who came to this office ever pointed this out. The girl only asked if someone would dare to make such comments in his office. Therefore, he should read to himself and try, and also remember to prepare tea and sweets, as well as cookies and warm milk that they both love are a must. 
The man asks what all this is about, and isn't it good to be in an atmosphere in which you can concentrate on the conversation? Laria says people tend to feel closer to another person when the conversation is over good food. Now Mikhail decides to answer his father. Well, he is a little nervous. Then Janet decides to help her brother and says that they got along well. The Archduke says that he understands and then claims that he prepared this table of sweets for the guys. And they can eat as much as they want. The main character asks the young master and young mistress what to say at such moments. And the kids immediately thank their father. And then they eat sweets with joyful smiles. The main character just smiles. A short time later, the kids are already lying on the floor with full bellies. Janet claims she can't eat anymore. And the main character asks if they had fun today and if they liked the conversation with the Archduke. The kids remember how their father, with a smile on his face, offered to sit like that again later. Therefore, Mikhail now claims that it was not so bad, and the girl adds that their father was not so creepy. The young lady thinks that this is not bad, and asks if they would mind if the Archduke suddenly invited them to spend time with him again like today, or more precisely, if it always remains like this. Janet claims that she doesn't mind, but the boy just nods his head. Then the main character is happy because all is not lost, and if the children were completely closed off from Nocton, it would be more difficult. Although most likely they were waiting until recently for the moment when their father would become warmer and kinder to them. Laria remembers her past life, where she was bullied and humiliated, but then she shakes her head and thinks that they'll stop remembering this because it's all long behind. The girl looks at the baby and thinks that the reason she wanted to become a kindergarten teacher was because she wanted no more children to be alone and experience the pain that she had to endure. Laria thinks that she will do everything so that children can grow up in love and care and will never let them be offended. A little time later, the young lady in the Archduke's room suggests that we try our best today. The young man claims that today she is abnormally energetic and Laria says that yes and suggests getting started. When the girl realized that everything was going well, she offered Nocton to teach him how to handle children, because this is also the responsibility of the nanny, although many are silent about this because they do not want to add unnecessary problems to themselves. But today, the young lady has to teach him how to carry children and hug them correctly. But when the girl looks at the Archduke, she is surprised. She screams, why did he pick up the bear like a sack of potatoes? Nocton asks how he can lift it otherwise. Then the main character tells him to eat carefully. After all, you need to lift the bear not like a sack of potatoes or a simple object, but as if he had a real child in his arms, and the guy should hug him, and also press him to himself, gently supporting his back and butt. The young lady shows how to do it, and then hands the bear to the Archduke and says that now it's his turn and let him repeat after her. And also, if Nocton wants, she can show it again. The blonde thinks that Nocton usually only dealt with knights or subordinates, so she thinks this is new to the guy. After all, due to the specifics of his work, he could hardly see how to properly treat children and the Archduke is trying very hard, so this is commendable. Well then, the young man just asks if he is holding the bear correctly. The main character replies that he did much better than before. But due to the fact that it is unsafe, he is unlikely to be able to hold the child like that. Then the girl comes up with a brilliant idea. She stands behind the Archduke and shows him how to hold this bear correctly. But then she notices something strange and wonders why Nocton trembled so recently. But at the same moment, the girl jumps back in horror. She apologizes and says that they did this on purpose because it was just easier to show. The young lady asks the guy to believe her, and she herself thinks that she made a mistake, because how could she forget that Nocton hates any touch from a woman? And it looks like he was right, because she really does have a crappy memory. The main character thinks whether he will be angry or sarcastic. Then she apologizes to his lordship. Nadyusha claims that everything is in perfect order, and Laria need not worry. The main character wants to return it, but he claims that he has already said that he is in perfect order. The blonde wonders if she was just wasting herself in vain and what she did was the norm as part of her training, after which the girl offers to continue. The guy agrees with a serious expression on his face, and a few minutes later he is already making progress in this matter. The main character says that this is an excellent job, and thanks to the lessons, the Archduke learned to carry a child in his arms, and all that remains is to put it into practice. After all, if he applies this knowledge to haunting meetings with children, but the young man does not let her finish and claims that this is a waste of time. After all, 
The kids are unlikely to ever want him to pick them up, because they are afraid of their father and maybe even hate him. The main character is a little shocked by such a statement. She says that everything is not so at all, and they ask whether the guy managed to forget how good they were together that time. But later Laria talked to the children and the kids said that they liked it, and they also did not mind spending more time with his lordship in the future. Therefore, the young lady takes the guy by the hand and asks him to cast aside these doubts. It's too early to give up. The Archduke is a little encouraged by these words. The guy claims that he probably looked pathetic in the eyes of the young lady since he decided to give up so easily. The main character waves her hands and says what it is. But they have a special relationship, so the Archduke may not worry so much. The guy asks what special means. And Laria replies that they have a fake engagement, so their relationship is special. Nocton says with some disappointment that it is so. The girl thinks that she is very glad that the guy met her halfway and decided to improve relationships with the children. And the young lady thinks that if Nocton had known that this was being done for everyone's happiness, he would have tried even harder. After which the young lady offers to try only another time. Because that's enough for today. But when the girl is already preparing to open the door, the young man grabs the door handle. He asks the young lady to let him guide her. The blonde wonders if the guy is doing this again. But she doesn't understand why he needs this mansion, and it's so well guarded. The main character thinks that sometimes it is very difficult to understand Nocton's train of thought. And in the end, despite Laria's indignation, I had to agree, because if she had done otherwise, it would have been regarded as disrespect. The Archduke asks if the girl needs to get up early tomorrow, because if so, she should go to bed early and get a good night's sleep. The main character agrees and tells him to sleep well too, but then the girl remembers that Nocton doesn't sleep well at night. And he prefers not to sleep at all, and if he does fall asleep, then he only dreams of nightmares, and the guy has to go through all this night after night because of her. The young lady realizes that usually in novels, the main character heals the main character's wounds, which no one else knows about, and as a result, the main character falls in love with her, and then a happy ending awaits them. But the girl decided to take a different path, so the main character does not just fall in love with the main character who saved him, he becomes obsessed with her and finishes off everyone who even comes close to her. The young lady understands that because of her selfishness, she put the young man through such torment, and she is very sorry. So now she simply must do something for the Archduke. The main character turns to his lordship, to which the young man turns around and asks what she wanted. But Laria says that it's nothing special and she wants to put the Archduke to bed. So the girl asks if he minds. The guy is a little shocked by this statement and asks how the young lady knew that he had problems sleeping. After all, she is a lady who attends sewing classes, reads and participates in tea parties, and also has an education with the help of which she can diagnose insomnia in adults. Laria says that's not true, and the guy just drinks tea with lavender every evening. It calms and relieves pain. After all, this is a desperate ingredient that is often used for sound sleep. And on the bookshelf of his office, there is a book about insomnia, and the girl simply assumed this based on all this. The Archduke claims that her analytical skills are quite good, and that perhaps the girl's calling is not to be a nanny, but a detective. Laria thinks whether he is serious or sarcasm. Or the main character could be offended by the fact that the girl knows his weaknesses. The young man says that no one has ever been able to cure this insomnia. He is quite curious about how the young lady is going to put him to sleep, and then tells her to follow him. A short time later, being in his room, he claims that he will leave for a while to change clothes. The main character agrees, but she herself thinks that a men's room that smells so nice is a rarity. But the main character's room also turned out to be a palace, but compared to this one, it is quite spacious. The guy turns to the young lady and asks if she has considered everything. When the girl turns around, she sees the Archduke in a robe. The young lady is a little embarrassed by this, but then she thinks she should calm down. After the brunette lies down on the bed, the main character says that she will sing him a song. The young man asks if she will sing. And the girl claims that even if you can't tell from her, she can put any child to sleep in five minutes with a lullaby, and even a crying child is not a problem. The brunette says that this is funny, and claims that he tried many ways to cure this insomnia, and if the girl knew about at least a quarter of these methods, she would not dare to say such a thing. 
The young lady thinks that she knows all the methods that he tried as the author of this novel, and therefore knows more about him than anyone else. But perhaps even more than the Archduke knows about himself. So the young lady says that he should give her exactly five minutes. After all, since he has put in a lot of effort, the girl asks him to listen to her song too. Well, if he still doesn't like it, then he can kick her out the door. Laria thinks that she wants to help in any way she can. She understands how painfully Nocton lived all this time. The young man says that the girl can do as she wishes, although in any case it will be a waste of time. The main character sits on the bed and thinks that she will just go for broke. After all, she will either succeed or everything will end in complete failure. The young lady claims she is starting, and then he sings the first words of the lullaby. The young man heard them and immediately grabbed the girl by the shoulder and furiously asks what she is doing and how she knows this song, as well as why the young lady decided to perform it and what the hell her intentions are. Laria thinks how hard the Archduke grabbed her, but she understands that Nocton must have been in even more pain and fear in the past. His insomnia is due to trauma left by the children's real father, and this is a song that the man sang to little Nocton several times. In other words, this is all a gamble, and then he will either remember the good memories and fall asleep soundly, or on the contrary, he will go crazy. The girl understands that first she needs to calm the young man down and asks what the guy is talking about and what intentions he has in mind. After all, this is just a folk song that was popular in its area. Nocton asks what she's talking about. And Laria says that adults often sing it as a lullaby and she heard that this song was spread by a wandering singer who came from afar. The young lady asks if the Archduke also heard this song. The young man claims that it seems so. Then he goes back to bed and curses this wandering singer, asking why he made this song popular. The main character did not think that the young man would become so furious and as expected. It was a foolhardy idea to knock out a wedge with a wedge that brought him face to face with painful memories. Nocton turns around and says that if someone sees, they will think that he threatened Laria. And wasn't the girl proud that she could put anyone to sleep in five minutes? The young lady listens to him carefully, and the guy claims that he will give her exactly five minutes, and during this time, Laria can do anything. The main character thanks him and claims that she will try very hard and will never disappoint the Archduke with her singing. The brunette says that after five minutes they will stop this, and the young lady will not have another chance because he cannot afford to waste his time like this. The blonde agrees and says to trust her because this song is the best when it comes to sleep. The Archduke claims that he knows this, and the young lady then begins to sing a lullaby as she finishes addressing his lordship. But he sees that the young man is already asleep. The main character sighs and wishes him good night. Then she goes to the kids. The girl apologizes to Mary because lately she is increasingly leaving her children to the maid. The maid says that this is nothing and the meeting with the owner is more important and everything is in order so the lady can go quickly and the children sleep like angels. The main character thanks the maid. And the maid wonders if everything is okay with the lady since today the main character has helped Nocton sleep every night. That day the girl did the same. She thinks that today she was a little late because she had to put the children to bed. Laria looks at the starry sky and realizes that Nocton, who could not fall asleep even after listening to any famous performances or taking a famous drug, now falls asleep in a matter of minutes after listening to her lullaby. The young lady, sitting on his bed, asks if the Archduke is well settled, because if so, then she will start singing. But the young man interrupts the main character and turns to her. He claims that at first. He wants to ask her something, and then claims that the girl's working day these days was much longer than usual. The young lady doesn't understand what he's talking about, and then realizes that her working day has actually lengthened, because before she was free, as soon as the children fell asleep. But lately she's been teaching Nocton how to communicate with children, so she goes to bed later. Laria claims that everything is fine and she also has mild insomnia, so it's nothing that her sleep pattern has changed a little. But the brunette says that this is not normal because what will happen if she faints from overwork? He wouldn't want people to gossip that their servants are being driven to exhaustion here. The blonde thinks that this is not such a troublesome job, but the young man claims that from now on, the girl can start work two hours later. And now she will work from nine in the morning. The Archduke also asks not to be forced to repeat this again. The main character is a little shocked and says that then she won't be able to wake up the kids and feed them in the morning, 
But the brunette claims that this is not a problem because he can hire two more nannies who will take care of them from 7 to 9 in the morning, after which he asks if this is enough to Laria agreed. But the girl thinks what kind of employer would hire more workers to give someone else a break because this is incomprehensible to the mind. Therefore, the main character tries to object, but the young man claims that he does not accept any objections. After all, this is an order and it is not discussed, but the girl will obey the Archduke. The girl says she will do as he says. Then the young man says that this is nice and wishes her good night. The blonde thinks that, of course, she thanks him for his concern. But she doesn't understand going that far for the same thing. And when she finishes singing the lullaby, she looks at the sleeping Archduke. The young lady thinks she can't help but notice that he looks damn handsome, and especially when he sleeps. The main character is already raising her hand and thinks that the guy doesn't look menacing, but even cute. But then she immediately pulls her hand back and hits herself in the face. The girl wondering how she can think about this. Then she leaves the room and thinks that he is probably already crazy because this is almost harassment. But the next day, the young lady wakes up early in the morning. Then she realizes that from now on she can sleep longer. But unfortunately the girl woke up so early again out of habit. The blonde thinks that she is worried because suddenly the young lady did not like the food and she is making a scandal there. And she lies calmly in bed or the young master could again accidentally hit himself and cry. Therefore, a little time later, the girl already enters the dining room. The rumors are a little shocked, and the young lady wishes them good morning and asks if they slept well. The maid says that of course it is, and then apologizes that they did not greet the girl properly because they did not expect to see the lady before nine o'clock in the morning. And most importantly, I'm not saying that she tried to sleep longer, but couldn't because she was worried about the children. That's why I decided to come there earlier. The girl approaches the kids and begins to wake them up. She doesn't understand what came over her Nocton, after all. Laria felt quite well even with her previous working hours, because she only had to look after the children and then the girl coped brilliantly. His work hours also changed, and this was done for convenience, since the maid only serves Laria. But to be honest, the main character thinks that she should have been given more rest, because the maid worked tirelessly. The blonde is happy that now Mary can get a good night's sleep. Well, suddenly the maid comes up to the lady and asks if she wants something special. The young lady replies that no and she doesn't need anything, but she wonders what the kitchen manager is doing here. The woman's wife asks if the mistress is hungry and can bring her some freshly baked buns. But the blonde just thanks the maid and says that she is not hungry. After all, she already had a snack with the children, so the woman doesn't have to worry, and now she needs to look after the kids, so the young lady claims that the train is later. Then the kitchen manager leaves, but Laria thinks that apparently the woman was worried that the lady was hungry, so she came, and it's very nice. But suddenly the main character hears some scream, and it turns out that Jeanette has fallen. The main character immediately runs up to the baby, and cries out if she's okay. The girl says that everything is fine, and the young lady need not worry. The one who was responsible for this incident apologizes and says that he is really sorry because because of these papers he did not see the young lady. And also, the girl doesn't have to worry about the papers because the deputy commanders of the knights will pick them up themselves. The main character thinks what kind of deputy commander of the knights this is, but when she raises her head, she sees a young man who extends his hand to her he is welcomed and claims that he is Bernil Tysberg, second in command of the Blackwell family knights. He also apologizes for his subordinate knocking down the young lady. The girl thinks that this is the first time she has heard this name and believes that this is their first meeting. The young man claims that he has heard a lot about the lady. Uh, they also saw each other from afar at the banquet, but only now had the chance to talk in person. The main character thinks that she doesn't remember this at all, and it seems that at that moment, she had no time for the people around her. The knight says that after her heroic rescue of the Archduke, he became very interested in the young lady, and in fact, the guy heard that the lady abused children. But now, having seen her in life, he realized that this is not so, and he does not think that the girl would even dare to touch a bug. The blonde just thinks what nonsense he is talking about and claims that the guy is absolutely right, and she thinks that he is truly cruel to bugs and insects. There can only be knights like them. 
The young man apologizes if he offended his mistress and claims that he just wanted to explain himself. He believes the girl is different from the one he imagined based on rumors. He hopes that the blonde is no longer angry because the young man would not want to incur the wrath of the future Archduchess Blackwell. Laria says that it's good since he apologized and the future Archduchess forgives him, and in her thoughts she wonders if the knight decided to mock her. The deputy bows and says he thanks the future Archduchess. The girl's wife asks why he is here and if he came because of her. The brown-haired man claims that everything is correct. The butler asked him to tell him that the young lady would come to his office later, and also said that he wanted to discuss something with her. The blonde agrees and says that she will come see him a little later. The knights bow and say that it is time for them to go, so they wish the lady a good day. The blonde thinks that the guy just talked nonsense and left. She also wonders if the young man really disliked her and thus decided to show his dislike. When the guy leaves, he turns to the young lady. He realizes that Laria Sherwood hugged the young lady without hesitation, who only recently stained her dress. And if the girl were an average aristocrat, she definitely wouldn't do that because she would hardly want to stain her expensive dress. And the girl responded to his caustic jokes with dignity, and she is also friendly and patient. But for now, the guy says that it's too early to draw final conclusions, and it's worth further observation. A short time later, the main character knocks on the butler's office. Simon asks if the young lady has come. The girl says yes and asks if the butler called her. Simon tells her to come in and sit down because they need to talk. After which, he invites the young lady to look at some papers. He hands Laria these papers and says that he would like to know the lady's opinion about this. The girl looking at the papers, thinks whether this could be some kind of contract and whether Nocton really decided to change its contents due to changes in working hours. But then the main character sees that this is not at all what she expected. In truth, this was not the first time Simon had asked her opinion. He asked Lady Sherwood if she could look at some papers, because this time they would be welcoming important guests from the southern part of the empire. So the butler wanted to talk to her about the dinner menu. The girl understands that this is not so difficult, so at first she helped him, but since this is repeated over and over again, she feels a little awkward, and lately the girl has been busy with other things, so she hasn't paid much attention. But now she has a furniture catalog in her hands, which contains a chair and a tea table included. The girl doesn't understand why the butler asks her about this, because this is a whole redevelopment. She places the catalog on the chair and then addresses Mr. Butler. The young lady claims that she is still the bride of the Archduke and not the Archduchess. It may also happen that his lordship changes his mind and cancels the engagement. Therefore, the main character thinks that it is too early to adjust the interior of the mansion to her taste. The butler claims that the lady is right, but tries to object. The young lady thinks that, hey, I'm sorry for the servant, but this is a fake engagement. Therefore, the girl says that if this is all that Simon wanted, then she will probably go and the butler screams that there is something else. And then he claims that the room she used needs some repairs, and he thinks that for some time, the young lady will need to use another one. Laria asks what needs to be repaired in her room because there were no problems this morning. The man says that the beams on the ceiling have been gnawed by mice and it is dangerous, so the young lady should not enter the room for now. The girl thinks that Simon doesn't know how to lie at all. The main character asks where this temporary room is that he is talking about, and the man says that he will take her there right now. But when they come to this room, the girl thinks that she knew it because the renovation was just an excuse to move her there. The butler claims that since this happened, she can now use this room for a while, and the young lady asks if it's only for a while. Simon says with a smile that this is true, but the girl realizes that she sees right through him. Therefore, the girl claims that she did say that, but it will be repeated that this room is too big for her, so she asks if they have a smaller one. The butler claims that there is no, and unfortunately, all the other free rooms are also being renovated. The young lady claims that, first of all, she is an employee of this mansion, and only then the bride of the Archduke. And more moreover, this room is much larger than the one that belongs to the children whom it serves, and the girl is not the owner of the bay window, so she cannot live in such a luxurious place. The butler claims that he understands her perfectly, but does not understand what to do because this is the only free room in the mansion at the moment, and they will try to finish the renovation as soon as possible so. But the main character interrupts him and claims that there is a free room. 
The man says that this cannot be and asks what room she is talking about. A short time later, the main character enters the maid's room with a smile on her face. The blonde greets Mary and says that they are now neighbors, and the girl hopes that they will get along. The maid only asks how a lady can live where she does, but Laria asks Mary not to say that because they both work in the mansion, and all the empty rooms are now being renovated so nothing can be done. Then the girl asks Mr. Butler if this is so. The man approaches the main character and asks if she is seriously going to sleep with the maids. The girl replies that, yes, and asks him not to belittle the maids, since she is the same employee of the mansion as they are. But the butler then claims that as the only daughter of the Earl of Sherwood, she simply cannot do this, and as the future mistress of the Archduchy of Blackwell. The butler tells the young lady not to choose this room. He claims that he was wrong, and asks the girl to return to her old one. Laria just says what he's talking about because mice chewed on the beams there. Rumora gives birth and bows down and says that their craftsmen have golden hands and now the repairs are probably already completed, so he asks the lady to come back. The main character, thinking why he even lied to her if he screwed up so quickly, it seems to her that it's not easy for a man, so she should stop teasing him. After this, the girl agrees. She apologizes to Mary and says that it turns out that they will not be neighbors after all, and the main character also tells Zion to raise his head, the maid claims that everything is fine. A little time later, the young lady is already lying in her room. She does not understand why the butler behaves this way. After all, this room is magnificent and several times better than the one she has at home. And also this room cannot be compared with the small studio apartment in which she lived before. The young lady thinks that she gave Simon a firm refusal, and in the future, it seems, this will not happen again. A short time later, the main character asks the maid if what she just said is true. The maid claims that, and she doesn't know why, but after her arrival, the dormitory was completely renovated, and the conditions became much better. Laria thinks that it seems Simon was afraid that he would go there again. But suddenly, the main character hears two maids gossiping. One of them claims that this has been going on for two weeks, and it was the same yesterday. Another maid asks if her colleague is serious, and if this happened every day for two weeks, because if so, there are serious passions. The blonde thinks about what they are talking about, and it seems that the girls are gossiping, so there is no need to listen. But when she is about to leave, she hears that the Archduke and his bride secretly meet every night. And this is definitely true love, and the rumor that they fell in love at first sight turned out to be true. And it's very romantic. The main character in shock thinks that everything is completely wrong, but this is why you can twist. This girl should have foreseen this, because engaged men and women see each other every night. And it would be even stranger if the rumors had not appeared. But now the girl understands why the servants became so nice to her. Therefore, Simon endlessly asked her opinion and even tried to move her to another room. The blonde realizes that they got it all wrong. She puts her hands on her head and doesn't know what to do. The maid asks if the mistress is okay, and then turns around and says that she will teach these maids a lesson right away. But the main character grabs her hand and says that there is no need to interfere in this. After all, she doesn't want to make a fuss. The main character thinks that this is a serious misunderstanding, but they are not spreading rumors out of malice. The maid just continues to gossip. One of them claims that she was very afraid of the owner. But he turns out to be such a romantic, and she also wants to have such ardent love. But then, one of the maids claims that they will be so late so they suggest they go faster before they are scolded. The main character is only thinking what she should do because rumors instantly spread throughout the mansion. She is, of course, embarrassed, but this is not the most important thing, because if Nocton becomes famous as a romantic or a passionate lover, who could not be worse? Therefore, this cannot be allowed, because the guy has never even held a girl's hand in his entire life. Laria decides to think about it in the evening, and now she says that it's time for her and Mary because the children's etiquette lesson will soon end. That same evening, Janet screams that she doesn't want to sleep. Laria asks the young mistress what it is and why she doesn't want to sleep, and also asks if the girl should tell another fairy tale, but the baby screams that she doesn't want to. The boy says that the young lady will leave when they fall asleep, so he asks her to stay with them. The main character thinks that it's already late, so she needs to quickly put the children to bed and go to Nocton's room. Therefore, she says that if children want to become good people in the future, they must be able to sleep alone. 
But Janet screams that it's so unfair because Laria sleeps with her father every day, so why can't she do this with them? The main character is completely shocked by this, and also wonders who said that to the guys. The girl claims that everything is completely wrong, and she does not sleep with his lordship, but leaves as soon as he falls asleep. But the little girl screams that the young lady is lying, and Mikhail asks why Laria doesn't want to sleep with them. The baby hugs the main character and says that she also wants to sleep with her and her father. Mikhail does the same. But then someone asks if the kids say they want to sleep with him and Lady Sherwood in the same bed. It turns out to be the Archduke. He leans over to the kids and asks if once will be enough. Janet says yes. Then they want to say that tomorrow evening he and Mikhail, Janet, and Laria will sleep in the same bed. After which he asks if the kids are happy about this and the guys immediately nod. The main character in shock thinks what is wrong with her ears and whether she misheard. Because if she heard everything correctly, then her children will sleep in the same bed. And although this will happen only once, rumors may spread that they have serious intentions. And some may even think that in the future, they will become husband and wife. The main character wonders if Nocton really didn't think that way. The young man just looks at Laria. And the girl thinks that it will be difficult for him to explain all this to the main character. But the girl thinks how strange it is, because this is not the first time she has been alone with the Archduke, but she does not understand why she is so nervous today. The young man touches her hair and asks Laria to tell her if she is angry with him. The girl just turns around and asks why he got it. But the young man claims that she didn't say a word while they were walking. Then the young lady wonders whether he decided in all seriousness that she was angry. But the main character was simply lost in her thoughts. And the guy has already managed to come up with all sorts of things out of this. So the young lady claims that this is not so at all and she is not angry. Then Nocton asks why she was silent the whole way. The blonde claims that she was thinking about her own things. That's why it happened. She thought about whether the Archduke would be able to sleep with the children and get enough sleep. The guy tells the main character not to worry, because he wouldn't offer something that he couldn't fulfill in the end. The young lady is just wondering when she will learn to think before she speaks. She asks his lordship if he is sure that everything will be all right. After all, their engagement is fake, but some may misunderstand his actions and Laria would not want to create difficulties for him in the future, because suddenly his future real wife will be jealous. The brunette claims that he is not one of those who cares about rumors, no matter what they are, but he asks if everything will really be okay. Laria asks what he is talking about, and the Archduke replies that she will spend the night with him in the same room and bed. The blonde says that she will be fine and they will not be alone, because there will be children nearby. And the girl also knows for sure that Nocton would not do anything, because he is not at all interested in her as a woman. The guy just turns around in response to this, and the young lady asks why he did it. Then the Archduke replies that he's just very tired and wants to sleep. The blonde says that then she will start singing a lullaby so that he can fall asleep quickly. A little time later, the maid is already screaming whether they heard something and whether the lady will really sleep in the same bed with the master. The blonde says that this is so, and the young mistress and young master will also sleep with them. Then one of the maids grabs the young lady's hand and tells her not to waste time. She claims that she wants to cast a spell on the mistress as soon as possible and promises that when they finish, the girl will be the most beautiful in the world. She also asks what fat to add to the bath, rose petals or lilies. Laria says that there is no need to try so hard. But the girls don't even listen to her and claim that this is the mistress's first night together with the Archduke and they want the young lady to be irresistible. The girl thinks that the maids don't seem to hear her at all because of their wild imagination. Mary is preparing her young master at this time. The boy asks when Laria will come, and the baby is just lying on the floor. The maid notes that it is very soon, and the mistress is now busy with preparations for a joint night with them. Mikhail says that he hopes Laria will come soon, and he is looking forward to her. But then someone reports that the lady has arrived, and the kids immediately run to the main character. The maid tells the young master and young lady that it is dangerous to run like that because they could get hurt. But then the maid sees Laria. The main character thanks the maid for taking care of the children while she was away. Janet says what Laria is a beauty, and Mikhail adds that she is very sweet. The baby doesn't understand that she made a compliment, so she turns away and says that they heard it. 
and the main character thinks how cute Janet is and it seems she was so surprised that she said the first thing that came to mind. The blonde understands that she is very glad that even the children were so delighted. Laria tells the young master that in such cases they usually say beautiful and not cute, but she is still grateful to Mikhail. Mary wishes good night to Mrs. E, Juno to Mr. and young Mrs. E. The guys wish the maid the same. And then they all head into the room knocked in. The young lady tells Janet not to run because she might fall. But then the main character looks at her reflection in the window. The girl understands that despite her numerous protests, the maid still beautified her, and the young lady only hopes that the Archduke will not think that it was for his sake. The girl understands that they would like to allow such a misunderstanding, but suddenly Mikhail turns to Laria. He asks if the girl will pick him up, but Janet screams that she should not pick up the boy. And it was better to take her in your arms. The main character asks if they are still afraid to go down the stairs. And she herself thinks that if she carries Mikhail in her arms, the clothes will wrinkle. And the maid tried so hard. But then the girl realizes that she is thinking about nonsense because she will sleep in these clothes. So she will still get wrinkled. So the young lady thinks that nothing bad will happen if this happens a little earlier and prepares to take Mikhail in her arms. But suddenly someone else takes the boy in his arms. It turns out to be the Archduke. The main character thinks when he came, but she understands that something completely different is more important now. The brunette says that he heard a noise and decided to look out and saw that the boy was asking to be held by Lady Sherwood, and didn't he tell Mikhail not to do that? The boy apologizes in response to this. Laria thinks that the Archduke remembered how to hold a child correctly, and the lessons were not in vain. The girl is so glad that she spent time teaching him, because it would be a shame if the guy didn't put his knowledge into practice. The brunette wife says that if the guys go to bed late, they will never grow big. When the boy enters his father's room, he immediately starts running, but the blonde tells him to run slower because he might fall. Laria then turns to the young mistress and tells her to quickly get off the chair because she might get hurt. The archduke at this time tells the young lady not to approach. The main character asks what he is talking about and if he said anything to her. The young man puts his hand on her shoulder and claims that everything is so. After all, he told Laria not to come near him. The blonde asks why and if his lordship is unwell. But the guy claims that this is not the case and she smells nice. The young lady is embarrassed by this. But then he tries to calm down and says that these are all maids. The main character takes her lock of hair in his hand. And he claims that it is the scent of wisteria, and then asks if the young lady likes this scent. The girl doesn't even know what to answer. But suddenly she hears a loud sound behind her. The main character immediately turns around and excitedly calls out to the young mistress. But when she turns around, she sees that the girl has broken the vase and screams to me whether she was hurt. The girl says that the baby seriously cannot be left unattended for even a second, and suggests finishing up with the games because they came to sleep. So it's time to go to bed. The baby says that then she will lie down next to Laria, but Mikhail says that he also wants to be with her. The young lady tells them not to fight. A little time later, they are already lying in bed and the main character is wondering how this happened. Initially, she was going to lay the children between her and Nocton in order to lie as far away from him as possible. But the kids were very persistent, and none of them wanted to give in, so the girl offered to lie between them. And because of this, she lies so close to Nocton but when the main character looks in his direction, then he catches the Archduke's gaze. The young lady asks if his lordship is awake, but the guy only shows her to be quiet. When the young lady turns around, she realizes that the children are already sleeping. The main character thinks that the fact that they are lying like this makes it seem like they are a real family. But neither the Sherwood family, who treated her with disrespect and indifference, nor her mother, who abandoned her, they did not show her the same love as Nocton and the children with whom she spent only three months, and it seems that they need her and care more. But the girl understands that she cannot think about something like that and hope, because she has no place in this family, because she is only a fleeting moment for them and the one who only temporarily took the place of the main character. Well, suddenly someone reaches out to the young lady, and then he gently touches her lips. It turns out to be the Archduke. He looks at the girl with a serious look, and the young lady turns to his lordship. But suddenly Mikhail says Laria's name and asks to put a hand under his head. The girl asks if the young master is uncomfortable lying on the pillow, and then tells him to raise his head slightly. Well, then the baby also wakes up. She screams why only Mikhail can do this because she wants it too, 
A little time later, the blonde is already hugging these two and thinks that she barely put them to sleep again. But it seems to her that the Archduke is still looking in her direction. The young lady realizes that he touched her lip as if to tell her not to bite her. And it was so sudden that the young lady is now embarrassed to meet his gaze, and she does not understand how she will look into his eyes tomorrow. The next day, the girl wakes up and then gets out of bed and sees the Archduke. She turns to his lordship and says that it's still early in the morning. The girl asks what he's doing. The young man claims that he ordered breakfast to be brought because he was too tired to walk to the dining room. The main character thinks that he doesn't look particularly tired and is it really breakfast in bed, but the girl doesn't remember rewarding him with romance. The main character thinks that she seems to be slowly learning to expose him for dodging answers and lying, after which the girl tells the young lady and gentleman to wake up, because it's time for breakfast. When they finish their meal, the main character says that they must have caused a lot of inconvenience, and the young man just asks what kind of inconvenience it is. The blonde thinks that, given his taciturn nature, such an answer suggests that everything was not so bad. Then she claims that they will go because the children have a lesson on the schedule soon, after which the girl leaves, leaving the Archduke alone with his thoughts. The young lady understands that if everything was pretty good for Nocton, then what about her because her hands were busy with children who were fast asleep, and the first person she saw when waking up was Nocton. And the main character opens the door and thinks that when they had breakfast together, the girl felt like part of this family. The maid turns to the mistress and asks if she had a good time. The main character thinks that, to be honest, yes, well, she says with a smile on her face that it was all for the sake of the kids. Therefore, he asks why Mary asked about her condition in the first place. But the main character thinks about something completely different because she really liked it. But then she asks her grandfather how they were doing tonight. Mikhail claims that it was simply wonderful to sleep with. Laria, Janet, and her father, and the baby says that the bed was very big. But then the boy asks the young lady when he and his father will get married. And when the girl becomes their real mother, Laria thinks they are talking like that now, but with the appearance of the main character, they will forget about her and will call her mom. And when will this happen? Then the blonde will be able to leave them with peace of mind. Hello. The children will not be sad and will quickly forget about her because they will get used to the main character. But the girl doesn't understand why this thought hurts her so much. She just laughs awkwardly and says that, to be honest, she doesn't know. The kid asks why she doesn't know, and Janet screams, asking the same thing. The young lady pats the boy on the head and apologizes, after which she claims that she will definitely tell them the reason later. She understands that sooner or later, even if she doesn't want it, she will have to tell them the truth. Several days have passed since that day, and after they slept in the same bed, nothing has changed. The kids asked Laria to sleep for another five minutes, but the girl told the young lady that if she did not go to bed early and get up early, she would not be able to grow up healthy. Then he tells the young master that his hair became disheveled while he was sleeping, so he suggests that he quickly comb it. The maid just watches all this, and then she claims that she knows that it is rude of her to say such a thing to the mistress. But she asks maybe the young lady should start taking more care of herself, because she works hard from early morning until late at night, not caring at all about her sleep and health. The maid asks why the girl doesn't give herself at least a little rest. But the main character claims that everything is fine, and Mary doesn't have to worry, because she feels good. And moreover, she is very happy. But the maid only grabs her mistress by the hand and claims that she knows very well that the young lady cares very much about the young mistress and young master. But if she doesn't rest, she will eventually simply collapse from fatigue, not to mention health problems, but the girl claims that she is really fine. Mary says that no. And from now on, the mistress should rest more often, and she doesn't have to worry about the children, because the maid herself will look after them. And a little time later, the young lady is already sitting on a chair. She realizes that she has been sent to rest again. And because of idleness, it again thinks that one day the children will forget about her, and she won't even be able to see them. But the girl just can't understand why they are doing this, because she has often gone through this in the past. As a kindergarten teacher, over the course of several years she said goodbye to many children whom she had known for many years. Then, after all, these children also gradually forgot about her, but now the girl does not understand why she is so sad. At the same moment, two kids run into the room and ask Laria what she was doing. The girl understands that when she thinks that Janet and Mikhail will forget about her, and she will also never see them again. 
that heart just breaks and the young lady already has tears in her eyes. The maid turns to the young mistress and the young master. She asks them to quickly come to her because the mistress needs to rest. N.O. Janet claims that she wants to play with Laria, and Mikhail says that he wants to show something. Home heroine. I say Mary says that everything is in order, and then asks the young master what he wanted to show. The boy is only giggles, and then shows that he has collected all the seals. Laria says that he is a great fellow, and the kid claims that he tried very hard. But Janet is indignant and asks what her brother did to be considered a good fellow and collect these seals easier than a steamed turnip. But the girl says that since Mikhail collected all the seals, she promised to fulfill one of his wishes, and then asks what the young master would like. The girl understands that Nocton constantly pampers them, so it's difficult to even imagine what he would like. And maybe the boy will suggest having picnics more often, and lying down will want her to allow him to eat treats every day. But the boy only points to his lips and says that his desire will be a kiss. The main character asks what he is talking about. And the boy replies that he wants Laria to kiss him on the cheek. The girl wonders if he was really so diligent in collecting seals to ask for such a sweet thing as a kiss on the cheek. The young lady thinks how sweet this is and fulfills this wish, and then asks if the young master is happy. The boy says yes. However, he thinks that if Laria kissed him many, many more times, he would be the happiest man in the world. The main character almost gets a heart attack from so much cuteness. She hugs the young gentleman and says how cute he is. And Janet, looking at this, is already shaking with anger. The girl screams why Laria kisses only Mikhail because she wants to. The main character wonders if their sweet young mistress was upset that she didn't get a kiss. Then she gets up from her seat and jumps up, ready to catch up and kiss the baby. The boy tells Laria to kiss him too. The main character thinks that she seems to understand everything now. After all, the girl let these kids into her heart, and they became an important part of her world, yes. But even if in the future they fall in love with another woman and forget her, either the main character will never be able to forget them and will always love them. And while she has the opportunity, then the girl would like to give them as much of her love as possible so as not to regret that she missed the chance to do this. The maid, looking at the letter in Laria's hands, asks if a letter has arrived again from the Sherwood family. The maid asks if they really won't calm down, because the young lady has already made it clear that she doesn't want to deal with them. Laria thinks that at first she received two, three letters a week, but now they are sent in large quantities and almost every day. At first only the stepmother wrote, then Norman began, and now Adolf decided to write a letter. But most likely they plan to get closer to the Archduke through her, and this is understandable, because everyone wants a place in the sun. Varnichnaya apologizes and says that she shouldn't have said too much, because these guys are still the young lady's family. But the main character says that it's okay. She throws the letters in the trash and says that she agrees with Mary, after which he leaves the room and says that today the kids wanted to take a walk around the market, so he asks if the maid will help him get ready. A short time later, Mikhail is already eating cotton candy, and the main character asks how he liked his walk today and whether he liked it. The kid says yes and offers to go there again later. The main character agrees and says later. But suddenly she hears someone screaming that she cannot let this person pass. The young lady thinks why there is so much noise near the gate because a second ago it was quiet. But suddenly she hears someone screaming her name. The girl realizes that this is a very familiar voice. And when she turns around, she sees her mother, Laria at least once. The main character thinks, why eat? The stepmother came there and with such behavior. Adolf also came. He screams that he wanted to meet with his sister and they ask what the problem is. The knight claims that his lordship ordered Lady Sherwood to be protected so they will no longer tolerate the inappropriate behavior of Countess Sherwood and the young master. The boy just screams out what he said and who is he to tell them such a thing? A woman giving birth tries to calm her son down and the young lady turns away and thinks that she needs to quickly go inside before they notice her. But suddenly, the woman turns in her direction and screams out her daughter's name. But the main character only calls the guards. She says that she will go into the mansion with the children, so let them drive these people away. But when the girl turns around, she hears Adolf screaming her name. But when the girl turns around, she already sees him jumping over the fence. The knight stands in front of the main character and screams when the heat is on this boy. But the young man only bypasses the knight, grabs his sister by the hand, and he turns to Laria, 
and a little puzzled, she asks if she really won't come back and if the boy is so hateful to her. Laria does not understand why her brother behaves this way, because the young man constantly mocked Laria herself and her in her body, grinning impudently and gloatingly at the same time, as if something funny was happening. Therefore, the girl does not understand what all this is about now. But suddenly, Janet screams if they are going to take Laria away again, and claims that the girl is her nanny so these idiots should not touch her. The main character understands that, if I think about it last time, the baby also stopped them. Adolf just blushes and cries out for her to keep quiet. He furiously asks what the little girl could possibly know to say that. He clenches his fists. And when Laria looks at his face, she sees tears. The guy, crying bitterly, tells his sister that he was wrong. After all, every day he bothered her, released centipedes in her room, stole sweets, broke a vase and blamed her, and called her names all the time. The guy says that he is to blame and he is very sorry, so he asks the girl to come back. The maid just tells the lady to just ignore him and invites him to go inside. The main character is just silent. And then he turns around and leaves with the maid. The knight calls for the young man to return immediately, otherwise he will be taken out into force. Adolf, with tears in his eyes, tells his sister that he was wrong and asks him to forgive and come back. The main character, returning to her room, thinks that all this is strange, because Laria is the daughter of Count Sherwood, which means that she is from a good family. The girl is beautiful, so they will definitely want to marry her off, which is why they tried to force her to come back during the dinner party. But this expression on her brother's face just now was a little strange. After all, the young man is too young to portray repentance so well, and not one of those who would resort to such a thing. The young lady looks at the trash can and decides to take one of the sheets. But when he opens it, he is a little surprised, because Adolf wrote a lot of sheets, and it seems that he perfumed every page. All this time the girl didn't notice because she didn't look carefully. Well, all the letters were carefully sealed, and the envelopes were decorative. And even the color of the ink was given attention. The girl sighs and thinks that her brother probably wrote several pretentious terms. But fortunately, or unfortunately, every word and phrase was filled with regret. He apologized and said that he was very sorry, wrote that he should not have treated her like that. The main character throws these sheets of paper on the table and thinks that she doesn't even know what happened there that he decided to go so far. She is the author of this work, so she thought that she knew everything about this world but each time he becomes more and more convinced that he doesn't know everything. And suddenly the maid turns to the young lady. She claims that the Archduke is calling the lady. The girl is a little surprised by this, but then heads to his office. And when she comes, she thinks that she heard that the guy just returned and doesn't understand why he called her without even having time to rest. But the young man says that more than half of the contract period has passed, so they need to update it. The main character does not understand what he is talking about and why so suddenly. The young man claims that he will add another three years to the existing six months and the salary will be five times more than before. The girl doesn't even understand how this is possible, but the boy claims that three years' salary will be paid in advance as soon as she signs the contract and then asks what the girl thinks about it. The main character is a little puzzled by all this. She thinks that if the current salary is increased five times and implemented three years in advance, then a lot will come out. But the young ladies understand that they need to pull themselves together, so they ask his lordship why he is offering her a job on such favorable terms. The young man only replies that he likes these methods of education. More moreover, it would be better for the children to have one nanny for a long time. The girl doesn't even believe that he's only because of, so I decided to make my salary via the cloud. But she understands that given the fact that she officially became a nanny, this is reasonable, but that kind of money is a bit too much. And after nine months, the main character will appear, so Laria cannot stay with Nocton and the children. The guy silently looks at the blonde and waits for her answer, but the girl only turns to his lordship with a serious face and apologizes, and then says that she cannot sign this contract. The young man clenches his fists in response to this. He reflects that he still doesn't know what kind of person the young lady is. At their first meeting, it seemed to him that the girl was superficial, but he was never mistaken. The girl argued that it is very important that children grow up in love and care, because only such people can become strong and independent people without complexes and emotional wounds. The young man did not understand who this lady was. 
There is one little known disease that has been passed down in the Blackwell family from generation to generation. It is called a manic attack, and this disease almost guaranteed each person unprecedented strength. But the price for this is the loss of sanity. At such a moment, anything is possible, even violence and injury to others. Nocton also gained power. It is called the eye that allows you to look into the very soul of a person. Thanks to him, the guy could easily determine the intentions of people. He also immediately distinguished those who wanted to serve him faithfully. With this power, the Blackwell Archduchy was able to rise so quickly in such a short period of time. On the first day of their meeting, Nocton decided to use force on the girl. The guy thought it was strange because he had never seen this color before. He understood that there was nothing special about Laria Sherwood and that she was an ordinary aristocrat. The new color of her soul, on the contrary, is extremely unusual and seems out of this world. The guy thought maybe she wasn't a person at all. He doesn't know what the young lady's goal is or who she is, so all he can do is watch her. The young man periodically asked if there was any news regarding Lady Sherwood. The knight replied that yes, and they assume that her family is against the lady's presence here. The brother argued that this was normal because their daughter was far away, and even with her man. The knight claimed that it actually felt like they were trying to hide Lady Sherwood from prying eyes. At this time, the main character in the corridor screams for the young master to slow down because he might fall. The Archduke wonders if the girl really loves children that much. The more the guy recognized her, the more bewildered he became. The young lady always says that children should be treated with love, but he doubts that the girl herself has ever received such love. But he is tormented by the question why she has such a color of soul. Although he is a typical, there is no danger emanating from her and, on the contrary, the girl's soul seems innocent and beautiful. Then the guy had the first thoughts that he wanted to take possession of her. Well, suddenly the guy realizes what he just said. The young man looks at his hand and thinks what the hell is he thinking about. The young man remembers how people gossiped when he went out with Lady Sherwood. The guy thought that all these people were like some kind of cattle. They were the highest stratum of the country. But he understood that as soon as it turned out that they were engaged, everything would immediately calm down. The guy was disgusted by the thought that people would immediately start hovering around the girl. However, he was a little surprised when the young lady let go of his hand, and looking at the light of the girl's soul, he saw that changes had occurred. The guy realized from her shaking hands that Laria had heard everything. He thought what a fool he was. After all, he didn't even think that a person with such a beautiful soul would be nervous when he heard something like this, and again he brought the girl there. Nocton understood that it was very difficult for the blonde. Then one of the servants turned to the master and said that the preparations were almost completed. After a short conversation about traitors, the archduke told the knight that he would remain there. The guy, a little shocked, asked whether it would be better for him to lead the detachment. And the brunette claimed that today he plans to introduce his bride, the knight was surprised by this, and the archduke said that he thought the servant himself knew that after such news, many would want to make an attempt on her life so he would stay with her. The young man understood that this dark color did not suit Laria, so now he would do it, probably the most selfish act in life. The young man realized that the girl was a good person and would take care of the children, but he is still curious why only she has such a color of soul. At that moment, the Archduke thought that this was the only thing that motivated him, but as it turned out, he was wrong. But the young lady even dared to say that he had a terrifying smile, as if he himself was not aware. She was also very worried about him, although she hardly knew him. Even the color of his soul, which once seemed strange to him, has now become so familiar. Therefore, when the young man thinks that she might disappear, his soul becomes heavy. But the young man doesn't understand why he even thinks about this. He remembers how yesterday, when the children were upset, Laria quickly consoled them. However, then the guy said that the next day he and the girl would also sleep together. The young man understands that he should have remained silent because it was clear that Laria was not at ease. But he sighs and hopes that the girl is not too angry, honey. She often came to sing a lullaby and he thinks that children will not change anything much. However, the guy thinks that this is surprising because he is the man who so mercilessly plunged enemies into eternal sleep and traitors, giving them painful death. And ignoring their cries for mercy, he is now very worried that someone might be angry with him. The guy wonders if this really means that he has feelings, but suddenly he hears a voice that screams that the guy is a complete disappointment. 
This silhouette asks if he didn't tell the young man to put aside his feelings, and Noel should just do everything for the sake of glorifying the Blackwell name, because he won't be happy anyway. The main character goes out into the corridor and thinks that these echoes of the past are appearing again, but he understands that the voice was telling the truth, because one cannot be led by feelings, and there can only be a working relationship between them. But when the young man sees the main character, his heart begins to beat faster, and the face turns red. He tells the kids that Lady Sherwood is tired during the day, so he tells Mikhail to come to him, because he himself will raise him. That same evening, the young man thought, looking back, he realized that everything was gradually changing. The song that brought back bad memories for him, her voice filled with serenity, and not only that, because the people in the mansion perked up and became more joyful, and the children no longer cry when they see him. So everything changes after that incident six years ago. His world, which had become colorless, began to be filled with bright colors again, including her beautiful color. But when he looked at the young lady's lips, he realized that something was tormenting her again. He extended his hand and understood that he wanted to find out what was bothering her and how she was feeling. Will she stay there for a long time? What does she feel for him and what else can he do to ease her suffering? The guy understands that he would be glad if he knew at least this. The Archduke thinks that a radiant aura, the one that appears when she smiles, suits her better. After all, a simple smile suits her very well, and at such moments the young lady is very charming. Withered like an old tree, a heart that did not want or thirst for anything. It began to beat again, the guy, lying in bed, understood that today it would be difficult for him to sleep. A little while later, when the Archduke was finishing dressing, Simon entered the room. He told his lordship that some time ago the Countess of Sherwood and her son came to see Lady Sherwood. And the young man understood that he was too careless. He thought that this family would give up after the incident at the dinner party. But he was wrong again, because even if he craves the young lady's attention so much, it is obvious that others also want to get it. The Archduke understood that he needed to protect the girl from the Sherwood family and should just do it as usual. But now the main character apologizes and says that she cannot sign this contract. After all, she doesn't know what might happen in the future and three years is too long. Therefore, she thinks that six months would be enough to start with. The guy thinks what it means that the girl doesn't know what will happen in the future and whether she wants to say that she can change her mind and return to the Sherwood family. After all, if she compares herself with them, then of course it will be good. But if the girl from this leaves the children and leaves the mansion, then it will be bad. The main character wonders why he is silent and whether he is angry that she did not agree. However, the young man says that they will extend it for six months and he will triple her salary, so the girl should think carefully about her future contract. The young man understands that he won them six months, but this is not enough because he needs a more compelling reason. The brunette claims that he heard that the Sherwood family had previously tried to break into the mansion to meet with her. The girl understands that he already knew about this, although this is not strange because this is his domain. Laria replies that, yes, her stepmother and her stepbrother came. Nocton says that it must have been hard for her, but the girl claims that everything is fine because the security took care of everything. And the guy says that everyone is in favor of dotting all the I's. It would be better to spread the news of their engagement. The main character doesn't understand what he's talking about, and the guy says that it's for the Sherwood family to get away from her. He thinks that if they do this, they won't be able to forcibly take her home. The girl understands that she is grateful, but if the engagement becomes known. The young lady asks if the Archduke himself will be in trouble, but the brunette only asks if he didn't say that there would be no problems with this, because they have a special relationship and he is simply obliged to help. But Laria thinks that as soon as he meets the main character, he will probably beg her to break off the engagement. The girl thinks that it's still worth a try, because it's enough to just terminate her first, so she asks how Nocton would like to do it. And the guy claims that they can come to the Imperial Ball together. The young lady asks what he's talking about. And the guy says that this ball will take place on the first day of summer, and it's the largest ball in the Empire. Of course, all the nobles of the capital will be there, and if they visit it together, then the rumor of their engagement will spread throughout the entire Empire instantly. The girl thought that the guy would simply submit an engagement announcement in the newspaper, but this is a little too much. But then, Laria realizes that if they go there together, they will have to play sweet couple in front of everyone. 
And Nocton only adds that refusal is not accepted because this is not a proposal, but an order. He asks if the girl has forgotten that she works for him. The main character only thinks what kind of threats these are. She understands that she is digging a hole for herself and with both hands, but she decides to see how the young man tries to settle this issue when she goes to her betrothed. Then she will laugh at him with all her heart, and at the same time she will become Cupid and bring them together. And the young man thinks that in this way he will declare Laria Sherwood his own. And even if everyone points a finger at him, condemning him for selfishness and perversity as he sought it. But the girl will still be his. However, the young lady turns to him and says there is a problem, after which the Archduke asks if she knows how to dance. The girl thinks that the fact is that she just got this body, but at heart she is a simple kindergarten teacher and not an aristocrat. The young man asks if she has never been to a ball before. The girl replies that unfortunately no. Then the guy squeezes the fabric of the sofa and says that these pathetic bastards went to great lengths to hide the girl from everyone. The main character in response to this only laughs awkwardly. She understands that it is only her fault that Laria never came out into the world. The blonde asks if she can come to the ball, but not dance. And the young man claims that, unfortunately, everyone is obliged to dance at least once. And this is without exception. Then the young lady asks what to do, and the Archduke rises from his seat and says that he will think of something, and let the girl leave it to him. A short time later, the main character is already studying with a tutor. The woman suggests that she start learning from the basics, and the girl remembers how the guy claimed that with the help of lessons the young lady could learn ballroom dancing, so there would be no problems. And he has already hired Viscountess Bonet, so the girl doesn't have to worry because she is the best dance teacher in the Empire, and the best dressmaker, Mrs. Rosalind, will take care of Laria's outfit. After which, he claims that all that remains is to add dance lessons into her busy schedule. After which, he asks if there are any objections. Laria says no, but she herself thinks that the guy planned everything out so quickly. But he himself is not a person with the most free schedule, so this is a little scary. Now the dance choreographer says he thinks they should start with the basic steps and turns. And firstly, there are several types of ballroom dancing, but the girl doesn't have to worry because there are basic movements everywhere. Therefore, you need to take a stance, and then. But the main thing is that she only thinks at what height she needs to hold her hands. But then someone comes up to her and says that it will be easier and clearer if she practices with a partner. It turns out to be the Archduke. He takes the young lady's hand and states that they will be in this position. The main character is embarrassed by this and says that now she understands but then they ask why the guy is so close. However, suddenly someone calls Laria. It turns out to be Mikhail and Janet. The boy says that Laria can do it. The young mistress says that she will succeed. The main character thanks the baby and says that she will try. The girl decides to give it her all and show them what it's worth because she was the star nanny at the dance rehearsal. The girl thinks that they will see and be amazed at how quickly she learned this dance. A short time later, the choreographer is already setting the rhythm of the dance. She tells Lady Sherwood to speed up the tempo. Laria is already starting to get confused and, having taken the wrong step, stumbles and falls. The girl closes her eyes in anticipation of pain, but does not feel anything like that. And when he opens his eyes, he sees only the main character's chest. The girl is very surprised by this, and she is very embarrassed, and then asks the Archduke to let her go. After this, they return to their previous position, and the young man already seemed to glow with joy. The main character thinks that she thought she would fall, although she would rather fall than see his chest, and she doesn't even understand how to forget about this now. The main character apologizes and asks the Lady Bonet, can they take a short break? The woman says that of course it's possible because they've been working on her for so long. Laria says it's lovely, and they can take a ten-minute break. But the young man only asks where the young lady's passion went and whether she got tired so quickly. The girl asks what it means so quickly because she rehearsed at least two hours. Nocton just says it's not serious. After all, it lasted only two hours, so he asks whether endurance is so poorly developed. But he is already starting to worry whether the girl will have time to learn everything. The main character is just angry about this. She thinks why didn't she prescribe such magnificent character traits for the guy as kindness, empathy, and compassion, but it definitely had to be made like this. The girl, of course, is grateful to the young man because he decided to help her and even found a teacher. But this is too much. 
The Archduke puts his hands on her shoulders and says that since the girl is so physically weak, he thinks it's worth reducing her working hours. Otherwise, she will lose consciousness from overwork. The young lady just screams, what does he mean? She also says that she doesn't get overtired when communicating with children, and it seems she has already mentioned this, but she will remind you again because her body is strong and her spirit is strong. Nocton asks if this is true, and then claims that this is the first time he has heard such a thing. The girl says that she often climbs the stairs with a young gentleman in her arms, and she can even climb to the fifth floor with a child in her arms. And the Archduke then extends his hand and offers to continue their dance. The main character agrees in response to this. And to the sound of the piano, they continue their dance. But the main character is a little surprised. She wonders if this has made her dance better. And then she realizes that her skills could not improve so quickly. She looks at the Archduke and thinks if it could be that he adjusted to her. And the young man, when he meets her gaze, smiles. Laria immediately turns away and thinks that this is some kind of nonsense. Why did she even think about such a thing? Children just admire the paintings, oh, presented before them. They say what Laria beautiful. That evening, the brunette sits in bed. He thinks that the girl spends most of the day taking care of Mikhail and Janet. And in the afternoon, she has dance lessons. After dinner, the young lady is back with the children, and when she puts them to bed, she sings him a lullaby. The guy clutches the bookmark and thinks that they spend a lot of time together and he won't be surprised, even if rumors spread that they are really a loving couple. And the fact that the girl continues to come every night despite her busy schedule most likely means that Nocton is disgusting to me and maybe even pleasant. The young man thinks that he could lay claim to her heart. At this time, the main character asks from behind the door if she can come in. When the young lady comes in and sits on the bed and says it's time to go to the land of dreams. The guy wonders if the girl said that because he's been busy with children all day, because saying something like that to an adult is a little strange. Nocton understands that he definitely shouldn't like this, but if you think about it as a sign of caring, who becomes nice? The main character only says that there are only two weeks left until the score. The young man says with a smile that it's true, and also fortunately, during this time, her skills have also improved. The Archduke wonders if she will fall silent again and laugh offendedly, lips. But the young lady is only silent. Nocton Genya does not understand what is wrong. And Laria then says that to tell the truth, she is very grateful to his lordship. After all, he tries so hard for her sake, and with whom nothing connects him. The guy gets out of bed and tells her to wait. But the main character continues to say that they are engaged. But this is just an agreement, and in reality, they are a simple employer and employee. Therefore, the girl asks if there is anyone else in the world who will do this just for the sake of some nanny. The blonde says that she really is grateful to him because the young man is her benefactor. The guy squeezes the sheet, remembering the words that nothing binds them, and it's just the relationship between an employee and an employer who are bound by contracts with money. He wonders if there is even a small chance that she is so happy with her life here that she will remain by his side forever. And perhaps the words that she will stay with him are the hope that the guy kept in his heart. And all this was just his illusion. He understands that he should not have dreamed of happiness. After all, on that day six years ago, he decided to never trust anyone again. Then one man said to trust him and not think about anything. And when they finish, the Archduke will be happy. Now the young man says to silence this voice. The main character is a little shocked by this. And Nocton still has hallucinations. This mysterious voice, penetrating through the silence, asks Nocton if he realizes that it is this voice that believes in his strengths and capabilities more than anyone else in this world, supporting him with the invisible but powerful energy of faith, and the guy deserves to believe it. The young man understands that he was betrayed by this disgusting kind voice. After all, that voice asked him to get out of this damn Blackwell mansion together. Nikotan just screams for him to shut up. The guy is clearly suffering from such hallucinations and the main character approaches him and asks if his lordship is okay. The girl understands that this symptom is a manic attack. And now the guy won't be able to calm down until he sees the scarlet liquid, because everyone who saw him in this state died almost immediately. The young lady understands that if she runs away now, she might be able to survive and also need to call for help. But suddenly, Laria comes to the realization that if she runs away, the brunette, who has lost his goal, will leave the room and then someone else may get hurt. But this mansion is full of good people who helped her and wished her well. 
Therefore, the main character does not even know what to do, and at this time the Archduke's hand reaches out to her and then drags her towards him. At that same second, the main character finds herself pressed to the bed. The young lady understands that the Archduke has completely lost his mind, and she wonders if she will really die here. The young man just screams how much it hurts him and that he doesn't want to die. The girl understands that there is something worse, because it's worse to think about how it will hurt Janet, Mikhail, and Nocton, and how it will shock them. So the young lady cries out with a request. She asks his lordship to come to his senses. The young man bites her neck and then comes to his senses. He immediately grabs his head and pulls away. And when he opens his eyes and sees a young lady covered in red liquid, he is very surprised and jumps back. He asks what all this is, and then he screams that he is a crazy idiot, because how could he do such a thing? He approaches the main character and extends his shaking hand. The guy asks if he hurt Laria badly. Then he claims that he did not do it on purpose and could not have done it on purpose. The young lady turns to his lordship and asks him to calm down. She says that she hurt herself, but everything is fine because the wound is small. But the guy screams at her not to talk nonsense, and the young lady from the tray says to her face that it's okay because he didn't want this. And I just couldn't help myself. Laria understands that if anyone should be blamed, it's her, who prescribed such a mania for Naughton. After all, a manic attack is something that manifested itself due to a terrible childhood. Therefore, the main character now says that it is not his fault and puts her hand on his cheek. At the same moment, knights burst into the room. They run up and ask if the Archduke is okay and the guys just turn around. And with a sad expression on his face, he says that they were late. The head knight says they are asking for forgiveness. He wonders if a manic attack has begun and does not understand who suffered this time. The Archduke claims that the victim is near him, and Ressor is surprised because he did not expect that the victim could be the future Archduchess. But he doesn't understand how or how the girl was able to survive. She definitely has wounds, but the guy doesn't understand whether she suffered from a manic attack and whether anyone survived after it. The Archduke only asks why they stood rooted to the spot and orders them to quickly take the lady to the doctor. Then one of the knights approaches the young lady and says that if it's hard to walk, she can use him as a support. An oppressive silence hung in the room, and everyone was in such shock that they could not utter a word. They did not understand how Laria Sherwood managed to survive. At first he doubted because no one survived a seizure, but the wound on the girl's neck made all doubts immediately disappear. And the reason why the gentleman was nicknamed a cold-blooded monster is not only because of his cruelty during seizures, the fact is that in order to stop his madness, previously every victim had to die. Yes, and so that there was a lot of scarlet liquid, otherwise more victims would appear. Then the commander of the knights hands the archduke a handkerchief. He claims that everything is fine with the lady, and the guy doesn't have to worry. Seeing the gentleman in such a state, he involuntarily remembered the day when, as a novice mercenary, he decided to join the archduke as a loyal ally and knight. Then the young man thought that he decided to come there only because of the good salary. But who would have thought that the gentleman would immediately go to the battlefield as soon as he became the head of the Blackwell family? And upon his return, he would receive honor and glory for his bravery and bravery. Then the Archduke was betrayed by one of the mercenaries, and the guy destroyed not only all his enemies, but also his allies, so the knight thought what a terrifying force this was. The brunette began to speak and asked if he had again plunged everyone into eternal sleep. He said with a guilty expression that it happened again. The knight was shocked by this. When he saw the expression on the Archduke's face, he realized that the guy didn't do it on purpose. The knight thought that the people with whom he had been working all this time had just died, and he had nowhere else to return. Of course, he was lucky, because he was the only survivor. But the young man did not understand what to do next and what to feed himself. He didn't want to admit it, but it seemed the Archduke was his last hope. The young man told the mercenary that he had done a good job and could come back. But then the knight turned to the master and asked if he wanted to create a detachment of knights of the Blackwell family. The guy asked what the mercenary meant, and the young man argued that instead of hiring unreliable mercenaries who could betray him at any moment, it was better to create a personal squad of knights who would always be loyal to him. The knight holds out a handkerchief and says that he would like to become one of them if the Archduke nevertheless decides to create a detachment. He also asked not to reject this idea immediately. 
The brunette took the handkerchief from the mercenary's hands, and he told him to believe that he would never betray the Archduke. That day he was hired by the master and earned his trust. And now he asks why the seizure started at all and whether something happened between him and the mistress. The brunette only remains silent in response to this and then claims that there is nothing of the kind. He throws the handkerchief back to the knight and says that this time there was no special reason for it, and then lies down on the sofa and sighs. He understands that Laria will most likely flatly refuse to approach him and will avoid him in every possible way. But that's right, because the guy almost finished her off. Although the young lady said that everything was fine, it was clearly not so after all. She will look at him with fear or even hatred as others did. And it seems that it will be difficult to control yourself if the girl really reacts like that. The guy is hurt just by the thought that such a possibility exists. The knight really thinks that the Archduke will again close himself off from everyone and live like a hermit, but he has only just begun to live like an ordinary person. Therefore, the servant tells the master not to reproach himself, because this time the seizure did not lead to anything serious, and he thinks that this is clear progress. He claims that it is very good that the lady noticed in time that the seizure had begun and immediately rang the bell, because thanks to this, they were able to come quickly. The guy says that he's just happy, but then he notices something strange, because how does the lady know the signs of the onset of a manic attack? After the doctor treats the wound, Mary approaches the young lady. With tears in her eyes, she asks if the lady is really okay and what will happen if she has scars on her neck, because what can she do then? Laria claims that she is really fine and asks the maid not to cry. The girl understands that if she had not rung the bell in time, no one knows what would have happened. But then someone turns to the main character and asks if she has any more wounds on her body. It turns out it's the doctor. The woman says that given the seriousness of the situation, the young lady got off lightly because she could very well have died. The maid just hugs the mistress and says to Frederica, don't say that because here you should be glad that the mistress is alive. Well, the doctor claims that she didn't mean that because Lady Loria is the first person to even survive after a manic attack, mister. So she asks if the girl noticed something unusual. The main character is a little silent. And then she claims that, to be honest, she doesn't know what can be considered ordinary and what not. A little time later, the maid is already escorting her mistress along the corridor. She asks if Laria will really be able to walk there on her own. The young lady claims that there is no need to worry so much because she only injured her neck. In fact, she didn't lie when she said that she didn't know what was normal for such cases and what wasn't, because even though she was his creator, she didn't know much about him at all because he changed like the whole world. And from the old manic attack described to her, only one name remained, and how it begins and stops is no longer known to her. The maid, leaving the mistress, says that under no circumstances should she get up early tomorrow because the girls need to rest properly. The main character agrees and then tells Mary to go and get ready too, otherwise she's probably tired. After which the young lady goes into her room and leans against the door. The girl immediately slides down this door with relief and then thinks what the hell she did. After all, it seems to her that it was because of her that Nocton was in such despair, but she decided to stay there only until the main character appeared. Therefore, the girl does not understand why it hurt her so much when she outlined the framework for their relationship. But Laria decides to stop thinking about it because first she needs to better understand his manic episodes. The doctor is sitting in his office and writing something on paper, and when he hears the main character enter, that says that Mrs. Laria seems to have something to tell. Frederica. The lady made some soothing tea. She asks if Lady Sherwood wants to tell her anything else. The main heroine thinks for a minute, and then says that Frederica, seeing her wound, probably thought that something had happened between her and Nocton, but in reality, there was nothing. The girl thanked his lordship for what he had done for her, and he began to have a manic attack, and the young lady screamed and asked him to come to his senses, then it seems that at that moment he came to his senses. Therefore, the main character says that she doesn't think that anything special happened due to which the symptoms subsided. She asks if the doctor knows about this better than her. Frederica says that the Archduke's manic attack is a little special in the summer. There is such an illness from a medical point of view. The main character is surprised at this, and the doctor holds out the book and claims that it contains all the information about various types of seizures that have previously occurred to people. 
The young lady takes this book in her hands and says that she sees nothing to do with the Archduke's illness. Frederica claims that this is so because even if you look for similar examples in ancient literature or books, you won't find anything similar to a manic attack and it's like a non-existent disease. The blonde understands that the doctor doesn't know anything either. But the woman takes the young lady's hand and asks to help the Archduke recover from this terrible disease. The woman claims that she is a bad doctor and she is very sorry that she was powerless against this disease. After all, after the girl's arrival, the atmosphere in the mansion changed. This can be seen from the young Mrs. Cheese and Mr. because now they are much happier and the Archduke began to smile more often. Therefore, the doctor hopes that the presence of the young lady will gradually cure him, and he will become a happy man. Frederica kneels down and asks the girl to help the master. The main character only asks what she is doing and says to get up quickly, but the woman repeats her request once again. Then the blonde helps her up and claims that she will try. The next day, she comes to the Archduke's door. The girl realizes that she did not sleep all night because she was looking for materials about the Archduke's illness. She thinks why she went there, because even his doctor cannot cope with the disease, so the girl thinks how she can help, but suddenly she notices a knight in front of her. He wishes the lady good morning and states that the Archduke is not feeling well, which is why he is here now. The young lady cries out what this means and asks if the Archduke is sick. The knight claims that this happened and there was no more business with him, but then he hears the Archduke speaking. So he closes the door and says that then the young lady can go and wishes her a good day. The main character screams for him to tell the Archduke. But the young man is already closing the door. The girl thinks that she wanted to tell him to get well. Well, she feels like the guy is deliberately avoiding her. At dinner, the main character wonders if she did something wrong yesterday. And Mikhail screams that Janet is a fool and asks why she doesn't apologize. Then he screams that he hates the girl and she's bad. Laria just tells them to come to her and takes their hands in hers. She turns to the young master and asks how to behave during lunch. The boy replies that there is no need to talk loudly and just enjoy the food. The blonde claims that this is correct. Then she asks why the boy yelled at the young mistress, and the kid says that Janet doesn't want to eat beans so she slips them into his plate. The girl asks if he screamed out of anger and if he decided to express his anger this way. Mikhail answers yes. But the girl asks if he felt relief after the loud screams or maybe his mood improved. The young master says no, and he doesn't seem to feel any better. Then the girl tells him to try to do this next time, and remember that bad emotions cloud the mind. Therefore, when he wants to give himself free reign, let him mentally count to ten and then speak, and then he will be able to curb his emotions and also express his dissatisfaction more clearly. The girl wonders if a quarrel is necessarily bad, because if at the same time the children only shout at each other and throw out their emotions on the interlocutor, then yes. But if during a quarrel they can identify what they are feeling now and learn to take control of the emotion and come to an agreement, then this will, on the contrary, help them learn to form correct communication skills. The boy claims that his mood worsened when Janet threw food on his plate that she didn't want to eat herself, and he wants an apology from her and a promise that she won't do that again. The boy understands that by calling the girl names he did not feel better, but by doing as Laria advised, he made it clear to Janet what exactly he didn't like, and it turns out that he doesn't have to call him names because if the girl apologizes now. But the little girl interrupts his thoughts and says that she is not the least bit sorry and asks why she should apologize. She runs out into the corridor and claims that Mikhail is stupid because he always complains, but suddenly the little girl bumps into the nanny. Mikhail asks Laria if he did something wrong. The blonde says that everything is fine, the little girl is just ashamed to apologize, so she behaves like this. The young lady understands that given Janet's personality, she believes that an apology hurts her pride, so it's good that they have different activities today. After all, we need to give Janet some time alone and think everything over carefully. The main character tells Mary what happened and says that that's why she hopes that the maid will make sure that they don't run into each other. When the maid agrees, the girl thinks that this is great and she will gradually deal with this problem. Loria also thinks that she should look up information about manic episodes but she doesn't understand where to find the information. And then a brilliant idea comes to her, and the girl asks Mary to take care of the children this afternoon because she has an urgent matter. The girl walks down the street and thinks that now, first of all, she needs to get information. She goes into the grocery store, Brother Cardo, 
The young lady turns to the seller, and the woman asks why the noble lady came to them and whether she needs anything. The blonde says no, and it seems the eggs she bought from them were spoiled. She also asks if she can return them. The woman just looks seriously, and then grabs the basket and says that this is a lot of inconvenience, after which she goes down the street and tells her to follow her. The main character understands that she came to the grocery store because this place is not what it seems. The saleswoman knocks on the wall and screams to open it because they have an order. Then the closet becomes constrained and the light can be seen from behind it. The woman welcomes the young lady to the best intelligence guild in the empire called Bradcarto. The main character is sitting inside the building. A woman sits opposite her and claims that her name is Martha. And she is also the current commander of the guild. The girl understands that thanks to them, you can get almost any information, and that the most important thing is to be sure that it will be reliable. The woman says that they will read what is needed about the young lady, and she thinks that the girl herself can't wait to get down to business. The main character understands that firstly, she needs to hand over a basket with 30 supposedly rotten eggs because this is a password that only some clients know about. And secondly, you need to mark one egg and put a note with a task in it. Well, it's not that simple. First, you need to make a hole in the bottom of the egg, then clean everything for us and put a note. And after that, you also need to seal the hole with wax. The young lady understands that when she wrote the novel, this approach seemed brilliant to her. But now, having done everything personally, she realized how absurd this is. And if all the conditions are met, then they will review the request and say whether they agree to take on this matter or not. A woman asks if the young lady needs more information about a manic episode. 